Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Hey, happy Pride, everybody! Ah, all right. Now we've got a whole lot going on for Pride this year, that's, and we are. That's the sigh of someone who just did their last radio show. Yeah, I did my last radio show today, and I'm 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 excited that next week I'll do uh, I'll do the STP for the first time in a while uh, on a full tank of gas here, full sleep. It's going to be interesting when we discover you like have a different voice or something. I don't have that. No, I don't have that. No, like I, mean, I might just get. I just might be more excitable and stuff. You know. No, but it's like uh, like when George quit sex on Seinfeld and he became smart. Like, I just want to know what you're like on sleep. <laughs> um, Jesse, <laughs> can we? Uh, <laughs> that, that's funny. Can we? Uh, can we talk about uh, get real and uh, what what SDPN and what we're asking you to help us do uh, this pride? Mm-hmm. So we're not taking half an hour to talk about did Seinfeld age well. Oh God, I don't care. That's not our. I not the topic of today's. From? That's not the topic of today's podcast. No. <laughs> All right. The important thing today is guys. Pride the month. whole thing about age is that it, it it doesn't. Nothing really ages that well. Nothing. No. I was. That's why I was. When people go back and they're offended by friends, I'm like, it was the night. It's like 25 freaking years ago, guys. Of course, it's out of context and bad. Ah. Of course, that's why we watch retro things because they're different from today. You went things. to a coffee shop piece of shit idiots <laughs> anyway so for this this year Don't laugh at that, month, we have a number of initiatives that we're going to be partaking in uh the first being uh we're going to be raising money for get real and rainbow railroad so get real organization in in toronto in the toronto area we've talked about them before they do a whole bunch of events in the community they have a lot of talks they have community outreach and they it's just about acceptance and love and and they're really great at what they do so we want to throw our money towards them and they are also uh with with our raising funds they are also uh raising money for rainbow railroad they're a global nonprofit that has helped over uh, 7600 lgbtq I plus individuals facing state sponsored persecution based on their sexual orientation or gender identity. So, to raise money for them, we are joining in a virtual 5K. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's a making us do 5K. something physical. Yeah. So, so how how this is going to work is we have a donation page. It's in the link of the description of this podcast right now, or it's going to be on sdpn.ca slash pride. You can find it there or just literally go to the description of this podcast. Click it. We're trying to raise $2,500 because that is their total goal. And we're like, we can smash this out of the park. Our listeners, they, they love supporting great causes. Yes. They're going to help you smash your goal out of the park. So that's what we're going to do. And the virtual 5K takes place on June 23rd. Okay. And because it's virtual... You know, record your video, you upload it online. So it's going to be on our YouTube channel. The three of us and a couple SDPN members are going to come out. We've already got a thumbs up from Tim Haraney. Yeah. Come out and, and, and help us achieve our 5K. But we haven't decided on like how we're going to do our 5K because Get Real's virtual 5K is all about inclusivity. So you can kind of do it whatever way you want, whatever way you're able to do it. So if you want to ride a bike and do it, if you need, if you just need to walk, if you want to take a car 5K, you can. So. Ooh. Because we're not, uh, some of us aren't the most athletic individuals. Shut up. Adam has a knee injury, Kurt. I actually do, because I jumped on a rock the wrong way, and it was like, <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh, and it's hurt for two months. We're going to find some fun <laughs> I am notably way. always in great shape. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to find some fun way to do our 5K. Maybe it's each of us take a K in like a costume. Oh, around a, a track like we'll go to a school down the street and we'll run around the track and you, like we've got to do a K. So do you guys have any ideas on our video that we got to release on the 23rd of us doing a 5K? Oh, man. See, this is where when you put me on the spot like this, this is where I struggle. It's important to pick a day where it's like 40 Celsius. Like today, <laughs> it's 32 degrees in Toronto today. And imagine yeah. you in a giant pineapple costume. Oh, man. Pepper. I oh run in a giant pepper. I like that. <laughs> I don't know where you would find it. Do we make Adam ride a tricycle? 
A broken one again, <laughs> like at the Marley's. Like at the Marley's conference. Oh, that'll make your knee feel great. Listen, if it's this hot, I might have to put on the Devil's PJs. Oh, oh. you do a K in your Devil's PJ. Please wear tight underwear. Listen, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So how, I want to talk about the raising money part mm-hmm. because there's going to be a tier system here, and that's going to be the grand prize. Uh, so we got to get to a certain amount of money before. Oh, I'm gonna, okay. Before I'm going to don the PJ. Okay, so you're saying unless we get the twenty five hundred. Yeah, you're, you're keeping your clothes on. We do the twenty five hundred bucks. We do the twenty five hundred bucks. Uh, I will do it. But if we don't do the twenty five hundred bucks, then I'm not gonna be happy. Steve, o- only PJs. I will do it in in. I will do it in normal runner gear. Steve, hmm. what's he, what are you what are you pledging? What a uh, well, if we can find a pepper costume, but then like oh, we can if, find a pepper costume. What if it's not nearby, hmm. Well, okay. Listen, running it is. Easily the worst option out of all the ones you said. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. people like when I suffer, so I pledge to run. Will you, if we reach our goal, will you do a separate 5K? Yeah. When Just- you first presented me with this idea, that's what I thought I was doing. Okay. And I said, so, yeah, what it- without hesitation. So if if you, Adam's sending me something because I think oh, you got no. something. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> you know. Jesse, you got to bring this up. I oh, think no. uh, I think we have it. Oh, dear. oh heavens! Give me a second here. All right. Oh my god! <laughs> I hope we can get here in time. It says delivery June fifteenth to twenty seventh. Oh, I hope so. So let's let's try and get this pepper cost for everybody listening. Adam found a. Rasta Impasta Adult Chili Pepper Costume. I don't even know that. I don't know why it's called a Rasta Impasta. <laughs> I don't know. Also, there's this one, Jesse. You can bring this one. It's such a weird name for a freaking pepper. Um, but <laughs> the whole 5K, you know how hot. Oh, be All already right, hot. So- no, no, I got another one for you that's even better, but it's okay. very expensive. Okay. Oh. I don't know why it's this expensive. I don't know who is selling this. Oh my god! A thousand dollars. I am not paying a thousand dollars. That we need that green pepper costume. We need that. We need it, but it's a thousand dollars. Like somebody, we need to pay a mascot to be on site every time we do a live show with that green pepper costume. That's like forty percent <laughs> of what we're trying to raise. <laughs> yeah, be, I don't think we can take this money. Come on, guys, put it towards a pepper costume. Come on, guys, we're like every normal charity. We're not eighty-nine percent of it goes to costs and expensive, and we give ten to charity. How about we just get the stupid seventy-dollar chili costume? I'll pay for it. I'm actually, right. I'm a monthly donor uh, to uh, Rainbow Railroad. Oh, right. that's awesome! Yeah, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, it was um, during the Morgan Riley "What Did He Say" controversy a few years ago. It was one of the charities recommended, and uh, I donated to them at the time. And then I kept getting their emails. And then when I got a little bit more money, I was just like, "Oh, I'll become a monthly donor." So I'm a monthly donor. So. We're going to figure out, we're going to come with us, tweet us some ideas on our Discord, write us some ideas, and we'll figure out what we're going to, we're going to nail down what we're going to do. I think we've nailed down, Adam's going to do it in the devil's costume if we reach the goal, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Pepper costume, if we can order it and get here in time. Full 5K, I'll do it. I got to figure out something. Maybe I'll do it backwards. I don't know. Okay, oh. you have to I'll run crawl. short. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a you way to. I'll do it on my knees. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, no. Blue shoes to no. your knees. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll do that. We'll figure it out. We got things we can. Honestly, I will take suggestions too on yeah. Twitter and on the Discord too. So like, hit we got us weeks. Up. We got a couple. We weeks. got weeks to figure yeah. this out. And we can solidify. We got to reach the goal. For us to do all this goofy stuff, we got to reach the goal. So where can we find this fundraising goal, Jesse? In the link description. That's our first initiative we have this uh, this month. Second, uh, this will be the second year in a row. We're sponsoring the Love Wins Golf Tournament, charity golf tournament uh, that happens at Lionhead every, at the end of every Pride Month every year. Uh, Get Real puts that on. We'll be there. We'll have our logo up on the uh, driving range again and on a couple different holes. So that'll be Awesome. So we're putting our SDPN funds towards uh, them and putting on this event and their uh, charity initiatives at Get Real. Third thing, we have new merch. Oh, do we? We have new merch and all of our merch proceeds this month will be going towards uh, our 5K. So once we reach our goal, we're going to take all of the proceeds that we made this month and we're just going to dump them on top of our uh, fundraising goal. So, Oh, that's cool. Our Pride merch this month or this year, we have some new items. Uh, 
we have A. Sports are fun for everyone. Ooh. That was designed by our community manager, Robert Malone. I love that. So thank you, Robert. Robert, well done. That's great. I like that. And Golf claps. Golf claps. A long time requested uh, item. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to do uh, a throwback to last episode. We do now also have SDP 10 no, stop merch. <laughs> I Don't. thought you were kidding. No. <laughs> Why do you, why? Hashtag SDP10. You can grab uh, any of the hashtag t-shirts or hoodies or hats. And then the special edition, we have the SDP and SDP10 <laughs> t-shirt, which is the Derek Jeter special. Oh my God. This it is, is uh, for anybody listening, go to uh, sdpnshop.ca to find all of these items uh, and take a look at the Jer Derek Jeter SDP10 SDP 10 merch. You know, you know what I like about Jesse? What? When, when he tries his best, he creates amazing things. But he, when he tries his worst, it's it's so horrendously bad. And, but it also works. I don't think you think that works. You, uh, Jesse, it's the is ugliest shirt he's ever come up genuinely with. Genuinely hideous and reprehensible. Like it's embarrassing. I want one. No, no. You I want one. Wear one. I want one. You know my dad. Okay, so this is so bad. If you're listening, uh, go check it out. SDPNshop.ca. If you're watching, it is on the screen right now. Uh, the baseball player with SDP10. Horrible. <laughs> I, I'm having trouble saying it. It's so bad. SDP10. <laughs> 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 Lastly, a part of our new merch launch uh, this month. Uh, to raise some more funds for Get Real and Rainbow Railroad is Retro. We couldn't call it Reverse Retro because uh, that's a thing already. Uh, retro SDP merch. You should call it Retro, but in reverse. <laughs> this is a long requested uh, part of our merch shop that we've, we're going to launch this month. So every day for the next uh, week, we're going to launch. We're going to pull some items out of the vault. Mm. Oh, no. Steve? What? I was thinking is what? calling it reverse retro. You should call it order. What? It's retro backwards. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought it was very very funny. Uh, All right, so order? Call it order. It's, it's, that's reverse what? backwards. Cuz it's like reverse retro so he just he said it backwards. <laughs> I love that. I my favorite part about this is how funny you think that is. I don't know if it's so bad. <laughs> it's it's not great. I want an order. I love shirt. him. I love him. I love right. Steve, but it's not great. It's not so, great. Uh, <laughs> I want an SDP SDP ten order shirt. So today, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, each of those days, I'll come to the podcast and I'll let you know what new or what old item we are bringing back. Mm. Steve, okay, today's. Tell the people. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Is this the, the voodoo wizardry and bullshit shirts? Wow. That's really coming back. That is definitely a throwback, Jesse. Those did very well. That's our first throwback. We'll have a new one on Monday. Uh, Steve, can you explain what for people who aren't weren't around back then? Explain this shirt. Oh, my God. I can't even remember. I literally can't remember the video this is from. Um, but it was basically talking about, and th this is like before Dubas, I'm pretty sure this is before Matthews, Marner. This is like the bad, bad, very bad Leafs, oh. the nine, two Leafs. And what I talked about is there's no rhyme or reason to how the Leafs lose games. You can just always count on voodoo wizardry and bullshit, uh, getting in, in the way of this team. Now we have mugs and shirts and all sorts of stuff. This is interesting, Jesse. I didn't know you were doing this. Yeah, that's the thing I was telling you before that we were going to surprise you with. I love this. Yeah. Oh. So I think this is cool. Monday, you'll ha we'll have a new uh, not reverse retro item in our, in our vault on sdpnshop.ca. Yeah, just go to the homepage, click the collections, and you'll see them all there. There it is. That's Very Pride Month. Oh, Jesse, I love it. So a bunch, a bunch of stuff. That was a lot. That was a lot of info. Um, I know we took up a lot of your time, but a lot of uh, important initiatives that we want to absolutely raise some money, do a lot of good uh, this month for Pride. Absolutely. Um, and you know, listen, uh, it it couldn't couldn't be a crazier time uh, to be a Leaf fan. It's a good thing that the Leafs exist because what would we talk about? 
Like there's nothing going on in the NHL right now. Uh, but we do have a new general manager in Toronto. And I think Who is it? It's Brad Tree Living. Whoa. Cool. It is cool. It's cool. I, I don't mean, know. He had a decent off, enough press conference. I like the fact that his dad, Jim Tree Living, said, you never get tired of pr- uh, being proud of your kids. Congrats, Brad, on being the new next GM. And then he tweeted Aww. at the Leafs and said, if you need a, if you need a backup goaltender, I'm 83, but I'm always available, which I think is nice. Shut up, Jim. He's adorable. He's Still adorable. a fresh wound, Jim. He's adorable. Learn He's, the room, oh, Jim. All right. All right. I want to ask you this. Can we be over that? No. Why aren't we not over that? There uh, are still people tweeting about that, and I'm like, I'm over that. No. It didn't, it, he, you know, Kyle Kyle wasn't cool with the way things were. He submitted a contract offer that said, hey, if you'd like to retain me, here's how I think it could work best. The oh, I thought said, you were we're talking not about David Ayers. No, I'm not talking about David Ayers. You're not oh, over that either. I was like, why would I ever get over that? <laughs> I, I, think, I think at a certain point, it's like, okay, he's not, it's not going to happen. It's, it's over. I mean, it's a fresh wound. But is it fresh though? It's two and a half weeks old. Like at a certain point, we got to move on. I've never seen, listen, I get Kyle Dubas was a good guy. I get he he ran a, a good ship around here. But for I, for one, am excited because we enter an era of change and chaos. And, and this could be great. This could be terrible. But at least we know it'll be interesting. What, what I really, here, here's what I think was encouraging about that press conference. Uh, remember I talked about how um, it's bad when you fire a GM a new guy comes in and he completely undoes everything the previous GM did. Like that's not a situation that you want, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because even if the guy does a good job, he's going to spend at least 18 months undoing all those problems, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Dubas has some things he needs to undo Yep, in Pittsburgh. Like that's, oh. that's Well, we'll get into that later. That's coming. That's tough. Like I, I feel like even Dubas's harshest critics – wouldn't say he did a bad job. No. Like, he, How could you? He didn't get over the hump, but like they were a really good regular season team and mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And what I liked is Jim Treliving. Oh, shit. Brad. Brad Treliving <laughs> came in and was very complimentary of the Leafs. Yes. Mm-hmm. And what they've accomplished. And I liked his anecdote about, um, you know, Sheldon Keefe, has had back-to-back 115-point seasons as coach. And when he first got to Calgary, he inherited Bob Hartley, who I think then won Coach of the Year. Yes, and he was there for two seasons. Right? So, you know, he he talked about a lot of the things that the Leafs do well, and they're doing better at uh, checking and everything. So, like, he talked about... uh, this team isn't in dire straits. And then he also went into specifics about the things that they are doing well or improving at. So like, let there be no confusion about Treliving coming in and being like, we need more big truculent lug heads or something like that. It's, you know, he, he just needs to make a better team. He didn't, he didn't commit to trading any of the core four. He did commit to signing Austin Matthews. He committed mm-hmm. to signing Austin Matthews. Which was, is the right thing to do. That's the only one, though. That's the only one. Mm-hmm. Um, so he didn't commit to trading any of the core four. He didn't commit to keeping the core four. He did commit to keeping Austin Matthews. He committed to trying to keep Austin Matthews. He didn't even commit to actually keeping him. You well, know you what I read mean? the quote? Go ahead. He said... Uh, he said, Austin is one of the elite players uh, in the world. We're not talking about a good player in the league. We're talking about an elite player in the world. Getting to Austin is a priority. That's priority number one. Mm-hmm. There you go. I, I mean, uh, listen, I, I'm at, the only, like, you would have to be crazy to, to, to think it would be something else, right? Of course, that's it. Um, he did talk about how he'd like, he said, uh, um, uh, he said he wants to be protective of the players, especially like the, the core four. He's like, I'm fiercely protective of my players, but this can't be about the core four. This is about the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's not about four players or two guys or one guys. It's about 23 guys uh, that we're going to have in this organization. This is not Philadelphia. This is this is not where it felt like the Flyers were punishing their roster for not being good enough. And we're going to hire John Tortorella and he's going to be a pain in your ass. And play time is over. This isn't that. This is just a different set of eyes. I was going to say a different vision, a different path. It's not even that. 
it's just a different set of eyes. So, you know, am I over the moon that Dubas is gone? Not really, but I think he's pretty happy he's gone. Mm -hmm. He got a promotion. He's the president of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's Shanahan's equal, right? If there was a meeting of all the presidents, they're going to meet face to face and it's going to be awkward as hell. And but they're going to be equals. Shanny's president of the Leafs. He's president of the Penguins. Uh, what's done is done, and and uh, I think it's one of those things where you keep receipts and you remember what happened. And you know this this goes on Shanahan's record. Mm -hmm. If it, I mean, if if Tre Living doesn't work out, if he does a bad job. Shanahan should be fired before he is. He's a rare president that has hired four different general managers or three, sorry, three different general managers. And I mean, he really, he fired yeah, the right. last crew too. He fired the, like, sort of the first crew coming in, he fired them all too. Like he fired Nonus. Uh, so he's had four now GMs underneath him. And notably, I know we didn't love the job that Claude Lozelle and Dave Poulin did, but he also kind of sort of allegedly ghosted them. Is that their, what happened? On their way out. Dave Poulin talked about... Like, what did he say? Oh, I didn't speak to Shanahan for like the last several months <laughs> or whatever that he was there. And there's, you know, rumors going around that some people in the organization are being spoken to. Others aren't. Right? So if this doesn't work, it's squarely on him. Squarely 100% on him. I will barely even utter the name Brad for living. <laughs> we need to rethink... The president position, I think, in multiple sports now, because Masai Ujiri really started it within the MLSE organization, where the GM is no longer the one who calls the shots; it's the president. Like Bobby Webster is the general manager of yep. the Toronto Raptors, but if any moves need to be made, it goes through Masai Ujiri. And I think Brendan Shanahan looked across the hall and he said, "That's kind of the way uh, we're doing this with pro sports now, where the president is the more general manager role that we think about." five ten years ago yeah like you look at um jim rutherford in vancouver jim rutherford is the quote gm that we think about the gm position being but he's president like they they have a general manager but all decisions go through mr rutherford and th this has been the interesting thing about dubis not having a gm and everyone's theorizing like oh who's he gonna hire and mm -hmm. uh, frank cervalli said cam lawrence could be a nominee but like I think Dubas is more than comfortable just handling it himself, right? So now. you missed the press conference, uh, parts of it, but on purpose, on purpose, or yes. the show. So, yeah. so Dubas spoke about that, and he said he'll be handling the general manager duties until at least uh, mid July. And we know he knows how to do that because he's been. One. He's a general manager, and also that's what the president does in 2023. These these new fangled presidents, the ones who are going in the roles now, they look at themselves as the decision makers. It's not unless ownership is hiring specific business people to handle the business operations. And then the business person hires a general manager to handle the hockey operations, which is kind of like what we have in Philadelphia, um, where the president sort of. is who's, who reports to Comcast as sort of a business guy and not necessarily the the hockey guy. Reports right to Comcast. <laughs> Just move down the hall. The the president is now the GM. So no. Shanny is responsible for these decisions. Dubas has been a GM. Shanny hasn't. Shanny, I'm not comfortable he, with Shanny. No, Hold on, but Shanny she, has. Yeah, he has. That's the role he's been playing. All and he's done is say said yes or no. That's you the general have, manager. You, ha different. you have to rethink what you think about a general manager. Well, at least in this situation. And Shanahan, by the way, dismissed that uh, over the press conference. Um, I don't doubt that he did. He said uh, he said uh, Tree Living was brought in. Uh, he said dismissed whispers that Tree Living was brought in to be subservient to a boss between ownership. Uh, um, basically, and this is in, I think, Luke Fox's article here. Um, something the ambitious Dubas no longer must do in his newfound presidency with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, Tree Living will hold the final say on hockey calls, according to Shanahan. He said, just like Dubas and Lou Lamorello, quote, ultimately, the decision has to be made by the general manager. That's how I've always operated. That's how I continue to operate. And I think Brad is a collaborative person. Okay, but we ultimately, know, we know I really do feel the responsibility has to come from the general manager. So that doesn't change. So that Did means his nose grow during that whole. Yeah, statement? that means nothing to me because we know it's not true. It was just it was just going on. It's, it might poke CJ in the head. <laughs> the nose is, is growing so big. Just knock Mr. him on the forehead. He up there lying. <laughs> it's not my theory. That's not true either, guys. That's it's not true. Dubas did not have the final say on hockey decisions. No, 
It's well, not- if he did, Brendan Hagel would have been a leaf. Yep. Yeah. So Brendan Shanahan is the ultimate decision maker. Do you see how this all comes back to him? Ultimately. Oh, I think like, everybody sees it. You, you can't cry over spilt milk, right? So mm-hmm. Dubas is gone. So Brad Living's the new guy. If Living does not succeed, Brendan Shanahan must be fired before Brad. Hmm. At at least at the same time. Right. Do, you're the guy. You're the guy. You know everyone's uncle, how they were like, oh, that fucking kid doesn't know how to make a hockey team. <laughs> yeah. Let's completely ignore the guy who hired him. Oh, this Brad Trilla, there's a haircut you could wind your watch to. You know, if the Leafs don't get it done, if they continue to fail the way they have failed, it's directly 100% Brendan Shanahan's fault. If they win, Legends Row. Oh, yeah. Don't give a shit. Legends Row. I don't care that he never wore the uniform. Legends Row. Justin Hall. Justin Hall. Legends Row. Legends Legends Row. Row. I do do want to say that on uh, my sports interaction bet paid out. I I put $2 down on who will be the next general manager for the Leafs. Brad for living. Oh, yeah. He was the the favorite. And I won $4.40. Oh, baby. Not bad. I think those are, that's pretty good. And by the way, there's lots of odds in the Dangles doozy section we're going to get to a little bit later, um, especially for the Stanley Cup final. But I just wanted to brag about my uh, my big win. Yeah. So, no, I think I, I think, think it's I, I think that yeah. that's the thing. Right. And 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 so uh, it's not like Brad for living could have sat down across from Shannon, been like Shannon, whatever it is you did with Dubas in terms of the power structure, I need that to change. He's probably like, no, I'm happy. It's the Leafs. Let's go. We, and and we so, need we need. When people quote that Shanahan thing, he's Brendan Shanahan said, Brad Treliving will have the final decision on all hockey decisions, comma, end quote, which we know isn't true, period. That's responsible reporting. It's not true. <laughs> anyway. I don't think CJ wrote his article with that in No, there. CJ didn't write this article. He anyway, should have, uh, because we know it's not true. Treliving has also been texting. He, he obviously reached out to Judd Moldover. Uh, who he has a good relationship with. He also was texting with uh, Mark Giordano, who was the captain for him a long time in Calgary. And he said, it's good to see him still playing at 75. (laughs) Uh, He's funny. I don't know, man. I found him charming. Mm -hmm. I I a thousand percent agree. And I think so. So the, the, what we've heard around um, from like, you know, reporters and stuff. And we heard this from Julian directly. He said, he's a really great guy. He said he was sorry to see him go. Yep. Um, I'm sure, man, Bradshaw living must have been, it must have cut quite the contrast to, to Sutter, who, you know, Eric Francis openly reported that people were afraid of. Yeah. Like that people didn't want to talk to him because he was so mean to them. He and like he, like Brad Treliving must have been like a care bear compared to that. Treliving had just the right amount of aw shucks in his intro without being hat in hand. Yes. And being like, hey guys, I know you the other guy was really popular and he got fired. And I'm <laughs> replacing him, but you know, no, <laughs> I don't, like he, <laughs> I, I I really thought his press conference went about as well as a press conference can go. Yeah. Ultimately, he hasn't done anything it's yet. It's day one. You can only take so much from exactly. it. And one thing that Julian said in particular, Adam, I'm very happy you brought that up, was how available uh, Bradshaw Living was to media members. Like Julian was only there for a year, but he said he had a lot of conversations with him. And that's that's not common across all general managers, you know, mm-hmm. who are willing to talk to the media and all that stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I think for for all the Dubasites who are so upset that he left, we got to remember he didn't win anything. You know, it's not like they're losing somebody who was like super successful here. And with Bradshaw living, he seen, he got off on a great foot. It was a great press conference. And let's see how this goes. Maybe he can change culture a little bit and actually win something here. I yeah, don't know. I'm very hopeful for the future. I also want to say that I think that, you know, if let's say and I really hope this happens, let's say the Leafs win the cup this coming year. <laughs> There will be 40 oh. different articles on every website that it was really Dubas that deserves the credit. Oh, no, don't do that. And the most I don't think do that. I think they'll be right because a lot of it what? a lot of this team has been assembled by Kyle. Now. Now, does that mean we give all the credit to Kyle? No. I do think though that if they win with the core let's say they win with the core four. I think Dubas gets a you got to give him a nod for that, don't you think? He kept them together. The so you know who gets a nod? Dave Nonis for making the team bad enough to get those picks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. The Toronto you know Maple Leafs have point. 10 unrestricted free agents this summer. 10? 
10 UFAs. Oops. 10 UFAs. And it's this... too bad Notice isn't in charge to overpay them all. Every win here on out. <laughs> no, that's Brad's job. Oh, yeah. Dubas doesn't get any credit for any of these wins. He's not here anymore. Yeah. It's not how it works. No. No, but it does. <laughs> No, I, I, it's I, a very I, it's a different situation to there was there was one very unique situation and that's when Brian Burke was fired like a week and a half before the 2013 season began. Mm -hmm. That team was his. He built a team and then he was fired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everyone was like, oh, Dave Notis did it. What the fuck? No, he didn't. He acquired Ryan O'Byrne at the trade deadline. That's all he did. Mm -hmm. This was Burke's goalie, Burke's forwards, Burke's defense. Burke, yeah, all of it was Burke's. Um, this is June. It's no, it's very Dubas's, different. It's Dubas's. <laughs> no, no, I don't like that. I'm just saying you just I just want you to know that this is what's coming. There have already there's already been transactions mm -hmm. allegedly since uh, Brad took over. Yep. Um, Simeon Durakachinsev uh, is going told, back to Russia. Sounds like he signed with Torpeda Nenovgorod. I wasn't even going to bother trying to uh, pronounce that. I'm so glad you know how. I bothered and I fucked it up. I, actually, there you go. I think, I think, uh, <laughs> listen, I know that people are mad about Dubas or whatever. Listen, I, I don't think, here's, when I think of Kyle, mm -hmm. Ooh. and I would like to stop talking about Kyle so much in the context of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Never. Happy to talk to, about him as the, as the Penguins guy because he is the penguins guy but when we look at um when we look at this i do feel like and i think if you're being honest with yourself you could feel like unless you are literally a disciple of this man the leafs could use a fresh set of eyes is that that hard to say why not they have not had they have had incredible success in the regular season but let's not let's not pretend they're winning president's trophies they're not they're not i think but they're not and then yeah. let me finish this point, sure, sure. and then and then jump in. Um, but the but the postseason results, I'm sorry, guys, and I think you're with me on this. If you're a Leaf fan, unacceptable. Yeah, completely happy to happy to have given him another shot at it, Dubas for sure. But I'm also not against a fresh set of eyes. And you know what? Um, you know, people were giving me shit about saying that the Tyler Toffoli trade wasn't actually that good. I'm like, man, he actually has been really freaking good. And yes, he gave up a first, a fourth, and a fifth for Tyler Toffoli. Or uh, yes, he signed Huberto at the top of Huberto's value, whatever. I look at his wholesome view, this this guy. I don't know. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't see a bad Flames team. And when that team rebounds this coming year with mostly guys that uh, Brad Treliving, I almost called him Jim, rebounds and and plays well with mostly guys it's that, Brad's team that he brought in <laughs> I mean it's gonna it's gonna look good on him don't you think it's too much to see him it's Brad's team it's Brad's team I, I think it's important to note with the Calgary Flames missing the playoffs this past year that it was odd yeah it's all a like, story. Oh, that's if, odd. if they got a, a little save. bit better goaltending fucking for save. like not even for any amount of time. A couple like overtime three games. Three games. Even that. If they just get a little bit better goaltending, they're in the playoffs. Yes. Someone, and maybe Bradshaw Living. And people are like, GM. why did they sign Markstrom? Well, he had come off the most unbelievable run with the Vancouver Canucks. He was so good that he convinced Canucks ownership and management that they were good. And they weren't. Well, and then, and then. He, uh, he goes to Calgary, has a bad year, has an incredible regular season last year, or sorry, two years ago, and now bad, mm -hmm. and then another bad season. The f okay, what would you rather be? Well, hmm, this is a tough one. 38, 27, and 17 with 93 points, mm -hmm. or 42, 32, and 8 with 92 points. I guess the question comes down to, what is the bigger number? 93? Or 92. 93 would be the bigger number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the amount of points the Flames had. The Panthers had 92. That's right. Isn't that fucked? It's fucked. That's not fair. That's so I, I'm, I'm ready. Change the rules. And I'm ready for a fresh <laughs> set of eyes because it, it makes things exciting. Like I know, I knew with Kyle Dubas, you were always going to get something like a real spicy trade. He always mm -hmm. had a spicy trade because that divided people. That so was like, really convoluted. Yeah. Oh, 100%. There's like 40 different teams involved. And yeah. I actually really like that because they're fun to break down. But like the Matt Murray trade. Yeah. Whoa, did that divide people? Cody there Ceci. Were, there were people out there going, Matt Murray's actually great. And he did play pretty well when he actually plays. It's just his body's breaking down. Did you like when he gaslighted you into Cody Ceci being no, good? No, I didn't. And people got mad at me and were like, oh, you're one of those anti dubas people. No, but Kyle, Cody Ceci stunk I'm anti-missing the net by 30 feet. I'm people. also anti him playing on the top line with Morgan Riley the entire year. People are like, well, he went to Edmonton and he's much better. Yeah, because he's playing every team's third and fourth line. I'm, I'm pro defenseman group. who can pivot. Like, what? 
What are you talking about? The Leafs played him in a, a completely wrong way, and they trusted their analytics. And by, I'm sorry, they were wrong. Yeah. And that's okay. It's okay to be wrong. But you know what they were right about? What? David Kampf. And they were right about um, Michael Bunting. And they were right about TJ Brody when they signed him. What a great deal that's turned out to be. Like, there's there's Brad, lots of stuff they were right about. Brad Treliving does not think the Leafs suck. No. And I think that's very important here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Why do you, why do you think that's important? I think that's an interesting point. Because he's not he's not going to make wholesale changes. It's just it's just as you put it, a different set of eyes. He talked about like Dubas evolved as well, mm-hmm. right? And that's why this team, you know, Brad was talking about the improvements that they made. They were improvements made through the adjustments of Dubas. Like, so you're welcome, friggin' Pittsburgh, for getting a more finished product than the Leafs got. You know, so nice that he got an internship here and now he gets the actual full time gig in Pittsburgh. <laughs> it feels like he left being a general manager as soon as he figured it out, hmm. which is annoying. It's like when at the end of me writing a book, I was like, well, now I know how to write a book, which would have come in handy when I was writing this fucking thing. Maybe you should write another one. Maybe I should. It's like when your ex gets back to you and goes, you know what? You were right about all those things and I'm doing all those things now. And you're like, you son of a <laughs> they, they have a better relationship now. Yeah. They're like, I'm really happy now. Thanks. Appreciate it. Ah, I did go to therapy. Yeah. 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 For free. I actually, okay. You didn't even pay for it, did you? I remember the one, that one really got me and this is so stupid and trivial, but I remember I I had an ex-girlfriend and she, I, my mom, when I grew up, you know, obviously, we, my mom and I actually went to hockey games and stuff together and football games. My mom's very sports oriented, but she's also very musically inclined. So I used to go to musicals all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to go to like theater and stage shows. And Steve and I were in a play together. And, you sure know, were. Um, but we used to go downtown all the time to like the Ed Mervish, whatever. And she wanted me to have some culture there. Right. So there is a, 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 a particular musical about the Four Seasons, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. It's a fantastic uh, musical. I forget what it's called. And. I had a girlfriend and I was like, you got to go. She's like, she's like, no, I will not go to that. I will never go to a musical. I think they're so stupid. I would never go to that. Anyway, uh, years later, for some reason, we were talking, but not in like any sort of way that we we're going to read it. She's like, by the way, I want to apologize to you. And here's how she put it. She's like, I'm sorry I was such a cow about that musical because I ended up seeing it. And it was fantastic. <laughs> how old were you? I was 22 and I think she was like 26 when she messaged me this. But <laughs> oh, come on. No. It was funny, though, right? You know, it's kind of the way it happens. Um, yeah. I want to know. I want to know what you guys um, like. Are, are you one of those people that is yep. going to judge? Oh, um, sure. When you elect. <laughs> yes. When you elect a president. Hell yeah. They always talk about the president's first hundred days. Right. What are you going to do in the first hundred days? Oh, no. To Why do we do set, that? To set the to set the stage for the rest of this presidency. If you don't get something big done in the first hundred days, it's a completely artificial construct only made up by the Americans. But that's what they do. If you don't get that done, then holy shit, throw it in the trash. Start another election. Call cycle. him Sleepy Joe. Call him Sleepy Joe. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I'm wondering, do you feel like whatever the fuck are you going to have? that sort of idea here because there are actually a lot of events coming up that that could set the tone for this. Are no. you going to judge based on what you see in the next day? Playoffs. Days? It's the playoffs. I mean... So you're judging, Jesse. Interesting that you say that before you answer. Sure. Jesse is judging results only. Yeah, no, I feel like... You're judging results when, only. When when was Kyle... When was that infamous Thursday that uh, Brendan Shanahan took the Gardner home? Like, uh, was it, it was a Monday. Like two, it was a Monday. Three weeks? Three, yeah, no, three but weeks. that's when we found out. Oh, yeah. Kyle. yeah it was yeah. that Thursday and into that Friday. Um, that was like three weeks ago, right? I feel like from that three weeks to now, I've been through like the the eight stages of grief, you know? And like I'm, in, I'm at the acceptance point where it's like, okay, all that happened. It sucked at the time. Now it's you, you kind of have perspective on it. And you're like, okay, maybe a new set of eyes is good. Brendan Shanahan's clearly more involved than we all thought, and he's actually the decision maker. So what? Now- but he said he wasn't. <laughs> the guy with all the power said he doesn't wield that power consistently yeah. and all the time. The guy who's what? The guy's don't boss. you believe him? Blankly? No, I don't. You know. So it Brendan should. Shanahan, he does nothing but twiddle his thumbs all day and has no involvement in the hockey organization, apparently. But now it's at a point of acceptance. And let's see how this goes. Let's see them play out a season. Let's see Let's see the roster they come with on opening day. Let's see how they handle the trades at the draft and, and free agency. And then we'll get to the end of next year and into the playoffs, hopefully. And we can have some sort of judgment here on Trill Living and Shanahan's tandem and how they do. 
You know, we're we're in the wait and see era where we were with Dubis and waiting out this year. Mm. It's gonna be a fun fucking twelve months. I'm it pumped, is. Man. It's gonna I mean, be a fun. I'm so excited. I, I actually really pumped because yeah. this this is gonna be the for the first time since since really since Dave known us, we're gonna have a full different view of things. Mm-hmm. Lou was a huge change, but like this is like but then it was like it was Lou, but in Kyle was there and then Kyle underneath. You know, and then once Lou left, it was like yeah, the organization has been on this track for a bit. I'm excited for this. But don't get like twisted. Like they need a win. It's oh, yeah. still win mode for the Leafs. Like we're not in rebuild. <laughs> like they have they have too many stars. It's so hard to get good players. In the he doesn't NHL. get the benefit of the doubt is what you're saying. No, no. There's no, hey, you get three years to rebuild or anything like that. You have stars right now and it's hard to acquire stars. So do something with these stars and go out and win something, please, Mr. Trilliving. It's important to mention he didn't win anything in Calgary. Didn't win shit. No. So And didn't do great in the playoffs. No, nope. you know this is this is going to be his legacy definer as well. How he does here, you know, like it's funny. A lot of people in the Leafs organization seem to be hot commodities. Um, Want to say that was Platinum Seat Ghost who put that out there? On he's right. Yeah, for an organization it. that sucks and is bad and stinks, according to everyone. Gosh, everyone sure seems to want everybody in this organization. Mm-hmm. Can we interview Brandon Pridham? We're going to take Kyle Dubas and give him a promotion. Spencer Carvery, uh, Carberry, we're going to take him and give him a promotion. Yep. Player on waivers, we're going to take that person. Yep. Oh, yeah. We're, your fourth liner, we're going to put him on the first line. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's very interesting that that keeps happening. I'm, I'm just excited for the first time Dubas trades down at the draft this year. <laughs> I, I'm excited for Penguins fans to know really what that's like. I uh, I was thinking about making a video with uh, or for Penguins fans because I mean Dubas was tremendously predictable. Yes, we got great at it, mm-hmm. didn't we? Yep. The the when I said Jake McCabe and Sam Lafferty in the same deal, and then they got Ryan O'Reilly, and we're like, oh well, I guess that's out. Mm-hmm. And then he got Sam Lafferty and Jake McCabe in the same deal. And every year you can guarantee he's going to trade down at the draft to get more picks. Yep. I wonder how many, I can't wait. How many members of the Chicago Steel are, are going to go to the Pittsburgh Penguins? And- Set your phone to Chicago Steel. I just realized something. What? Okay. So there's there's two organizations Dubas loves more than any in the world. That's the Pittsburgh Penguins, or sorry, well, now it's the Pittsburgh Penguins, sorry. It's the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds and the Chicago Steel of the USHL. Mm -hmm. There was a kid that Drew and I, producer Drew, uh, we sat next to them at a restaurant in the airport on our way to the draft. Mm -hmm. And it it was very clearly a family going to the draft because one of their kids was about to get drafted. Okay. And so I jokingly looked over at the table. I go, so which one of you is getting picked today? And the kid raises his hand. Me, I go, what's your name? He goes, Zam Plant. And he played for the Chicago Steel. Okay. And I was like, I wonder if the Leafs get him. They did get someone from the Chicago Steel, just not Zam Plant. You know who did get Zam Plant? Who? The Penguins! (laughs) That's the only reason Kyle signed there. So he because a Zam plant. I, 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 do you have anything else that you got? That was a long walk for a short drink of water. Before this show, Steve tried to make it, made a joke. How do you have this drink? Um, uh, Steve tried to make a joke before the show. <laughs> and Jesse said to him, you're going to have to try harder if you want me to laugh. And I thought that was funny. And don't we? <laughs> it was a bad one, too. <laughs> don't we feel like maybe that was like that, too? It was, it was like a really bad pun. Yeah. That didn't work. I forget what it was. I think. Penguins fans who know who Zam Plant is were very excited <laughs> by that story. So, so I you can, he has brothers too. Do you want to know about his brothers? He has brothers too. Did you meet them at the draft? I then met them at the restaurant and then at the draft at another restaurant. What, what was the the weather like that day? Hot. It was June. Yeah. What pants were you wearing? What yeah. time? I wasn't set- wearing pants. It was hot in June. So I says to him, I said, <laughs> I was "Wearing you, shorts." Did you set your pocket watch to the right time? <laughs> no. I had breakfast with Colby Armstrong. He eats a lot. He's a former NHL player. <laughs> okay. Can we... Uh, okay. No. Do you guys have anything else you want to add I'd about like Brad for living? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You want to move on? I don't think we're putting no, enough stock Steve. in the fact that that kid's name is Zam. It's a good name. With a Z. I like it. Go on. <laughs> the most quotable moment from Kyle Dubas' press conference in Pittsburgh yesterday is the following. And Steve has not heard this yet because... 
Steve wanted to save it for the show. So I want to get a Steve FR or a, a Dubis FR, a DFR on this. <laughs> DFR, Stephen, do not look at Jesse's screen. Take your freaking glasses off. Oh, Don't you I dare. You wanted me to. No, I'm going to read it out to you and you're going to have to listen. I heard. Oh, a lot. I'm not going to get to hear him say it. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to say it to you. That's no. Can you say it charming and like a youth pastor? Dubis, <laughs> Dubis was optimistic, and this is according to a Sportsnet article, about whether or not the Pittsburgh's championship window was still currently open. Here's the quote I heard a lot of people that we're highly skeptical of the team's ability to contend here. And the way I view it is, if people want to bet against Mike Sullivan, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang, and others, they can go ahead and do so. But I'm going to be, I'm going to bet on them and, uh, and I'm going to go with them there. I do think this group is capable of contending to win a championship. I mean, what's Now, he, he does say? continue to go on, but I want to stop you there. Did Kyle Dubas, we can and we will himself. Because, a little bit, because what if he fires or trades any of those people? So now he's committed to not firing or trading any of those people. Right. Which, listen, I think in a vacuum, all of those players are good. But I think the problem is that that Chris Letang had a stroke last year. We're worried about Chris Letang's long term health. And honestly, it's amazing that he's still playing because it wasn't even his first one. People people have been worried about Chris Letang's long term health since 2008. Mm -hmm. Like he has had crazy injuries that he's come back from. So you don't bet against Chris Letang to come back. Yeah, he's won three cups since then. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Evgeny Malkin missed most of last year. Misses half of every season. And in the half he does play, he's one of the best players in the world. I don't think anybody's questioning Sit. No. He's had some crazy injuries, but he's been amazing. Um, and Do, do you, and, wanna, do you want Kyle to say it? Oh, yeah. Okay, have Kyle. okay we can have Kyle say it. Kyle. Okay, Kyle. <laughs> good. That was a good impression. Thank you. Kyle! Um, through the course of this process, I had the chance to speak with uh, Coach Sullivan and Sidney Crosby. I thought that those were very important people for me. Uh, to get a real deep sense of where they felt the organization was at and where it would be going uh, so that I knew coming in uh, what uh, where they felt the Penguins were at and what they felt the Penguins would need for somebody in this role. Um, those conversations, a, a number of conversations with Coach Sullivan, but uh, also the conversation with, uh, with Sid were paramount in, in my decision to come here. They're some of the best competitors uh, in hockey. Uh, obviously, uh, Mike Sullivan's record as a coach and Sydney's as a player speak for themselves, and that is one of the most exciting parts about uh, about coming here to, to Pittsburgh to work with uh, the people that are up with me here, but also uh, every single day on the hockey operations side. Um, I see this task ahead of us as a two-pronged effort. Uh, in the short run, it's uh, continuing to make decisions that are going to allow the team to be competitive uh, while the core group of players uh, that have led the team here to championships in the past uh, continue to uh, perform at the levels that they have for as long as they can and make decisions that will support them uh, in the lineup every night um, that will allow the team to continue to contend uh, each season while those players are with us at the same time the work will also begin at uh, delivering a long-term hockey organization that can be the class of the nhl um, and to reduce any gap in time that there otherwise would be from the end of those great players' careers to the next era of great hockey for the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's our intention, and that's the work that we'll get started on um, as soon as we wrap up here. Um, and we're very, very honored to be here uh, and join the city of Pittsburgh and the Pittsburgh Penguins. I don't believe for, sorry, I don't, I don't not believe for a second. I, I'm fully confident that Kyle Dubas is going to be able to put together the second half of that. Mm-hmm. He is going to be able to create an organization top down right into the into the I I don't know, I don't want to call them minor leagues but the the professional leagues below the NHL. He's going to be able to do that. I can tell league. you Penguins fans he will absolutely be able to do that. Yeah. And he said, I I'll read it again. If you want to bet against Mike Sullivan, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang and others, uh they can go ahead and do that. See, I wouldn't bet against any of those guys. I would bet against them together. I, and it's not Mike Sullivan, and it's not Sidney Crosby. I bet but I really time. have a hard time, guys. And I understand this is what Kyle Dubas does, right? He, he's really good at nibbling around the edges. That's all he could do in Toronto. Once he signed Tavares, he couldn't really do much else. 
But he has a monumental task. And I want to bring up, Jesse, if you can, Mm -hmm. the Pittsburgh Penguins cap friendly page. Sure. To try to even augment the depth and get rid of all the horrendous deals that were signed over the last two administrations. And then on top of that, cross your fucking fingers that everybody over 35 can keep it together. This is, I, I to me, I think he put himself in a position again, and I, I know that he's a bold man and I respect that, where there's less criticism in Pittsburgh, but mm, you didn't uh, have to say, you didn't have to say that. You could say, you know what? They're great players. Our job is to win the Stanley Cup in this organization, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to do that. A great nothing answer that remains true and that everybody could understand. That was, boy, was that not Shades of Lou? There, there was a little bit of lutilage. But he's like, no, we're going to lutilage. 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 But we got to, no, we got to keep the band together. Do you? Because I don't think he can. I mean, he committed to not rebuilding, kind of. That, yeah, right now. And I just built. You don't, you don't think that's fair, Adam? No, I don't. I don't think you but can. But he's going to try and okay. contend for Listen, the next couple of years. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put my balls on the line right now. And you can, if they win the cup next year or the year after or the year after that with these three guys, you can quote look this at back the, to me. Look, in the, look into the camera. They're not going to win with these three guys. No. Mike Sullivan's a great coach. Sidney Crosby's a great player. Uh, Evgeny Malkin's a great player. Chris Letang's a great player. These four, with the three play, three of them being players, I don't think can win the cup together again. Listen. I um, think Crosby can win. I think Malkin can win. And I think Letang can win. But I don't think they're going to win if it rests on the three of them to be the best. Adam, I saw the Instagram post about your vasectomy. Yes. Your balls have been through enough. Snip snap. Yes, that's enough. You're putting your balls on the line, that's enough. Well, there's nothing left. That's why I can put them on the line. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't castrated. I know. I'm joking. <laughs> the joke. Joking. I'm just saying, listen, I understand. I, I, I love Kyle, but I just want to take him aside and go, dude. I don't know if that's how that You works. didn't need no, to say that. <laughs> you didn't need to say that. You d- that doesn't need to be the case. And listen, I love Sidney Crosby as much as the next guy, but I would probably sit him down and say, listen, Sid, we could retool in a couple of years here and be really great. He'll be 37. Yeah, he, he doesn't have time for that. Okay. Well, He'll the, be 38, he's got actually. Two, Sidney Crosby has two years left on his contract. They asked Kyle, actually, um, if he talked to Sid in their meeting about the next deal, and he said, no, I didn't ask Sidney about that because the future is uncertain for a 37-year-old hockey player. Who knows if Sidney Crosby plays a game in the NHL after this deal expires. Here. He has to be trying to win for at least the next two years. And I don't blame Kyle for trying to win with this core. Pens fans, watch me work. Jesse, can you pull up their draft picks? Like on sure. the cat yeah, friendly page. Draft picks, yeah. Oh, they got a first. Yeah. Lovely. Say bye to that. He's trading that down. They also Well Pens fans are used to that. Yeah, no, they don't have their second or their own third. So they're trading that first. They're going to trade down, and he's going to try to get as many picks as possible. He's going to try to do it with the Devils third as well on account of you don't have a fourth. Uh, and he has a Leafs draft pick in the seventh round. That's nice. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, either try to accumulate a pick for this year or like he's going to do some sort of trade where he swaps exact picks for the next year. Like whether it's like a later round pick, do you know what I mean? Like he'll trade this year's fifth, for example, um, in order to get a pick next year from someone else. Okay, but do you you think they can win the championship? No, 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 no. I wasn't fucking done. He wasn't fucking done. So he's going to take those extra picks that he's going to accumulate Mm -hmm. and he's going to throw some of them out the door in order to get new guys to help this team win because he does have a little bit of cap space to work with. So one thing he's really good at is signing these short-term non-committal contracts with good players who once they're done, those contracts are going to move on somewhere else because they're going to be too expensive. Mm -hmm. So for the next two years, he has to accumulate those players. Honestly, Michael Bunting is a pretty good fit in Pittsburgh. I'm not going to lie. I, I think, be. yeah, he would, but you got to drop. How do you drop? Uh, how do you drop some of those contracts? Let's go through some of them. Well, Jeff Carter, you need to send a space. Uh, uh, we like Jake Gensel at, you know, one more year at six million. Yeah. Do we yeah. like, 
Brian Rust for five more years at 5.125. Oh, boy. He's a good player, but oh, boy. Do we like Michael Granlin at two more years at five million each? Absolutely not. Do we like Ricard Raquel at five more years at five million dollars each? Uh, that's mm, Jeff. It's a long time. You, you, uh, He's you a mentioned good player, but that's a long time. You mentioned Jeff Carter. Uh, Jeff Carter makes three point one two five. You uh, were you're going to struggle to get rid of that. You do have a Nylander on staff. Alex. Right. Alex Nylander. You've got uh, Ryan Paling and uh, Drew O'Connor, who are RFAs. Josh Archibald, Nick Benino, Danton Heinen, and Jason Zucker are all UFAs. Doubt any of them really resign. I think he's going to steal half the Marlies. Okay. Uh, do you like Jeff Petrie at 6.25 for two more years? And I like Jeff Petrie. But I do, but like they're giving... Again, he's 35! They're giving over $12 million to Petrie and Latang. Uh, it's tough. Marcus Patterson at uh, at four point oh two five. I don't mind. We fought over this. I yeah, I like that. I like Marcus Patterson. Yan Ruda, noted Alan Walsh client, two point oh. seven five. I mean, he's good then. Then he's good. Uh, and then you've got uh, Pierre Olivia Joseph and Chad uh, Ruedel, who are both um, making about eight hundred grand. Uh, Dumoulin and Kulikov are both UFAs. I think I think we're wasting our time. You Casey to Smith and Tristan Jari. Uh, you, yeah, you need a save. Mm -hmm. You need a fucking save. And they'll be in the playoffs if they get a save. No uh, question. This is a playoff team. Yeah, trade Casey to Smith. Um, <sighs> trading Casey to Smith is easier to do if you have a goalie and Tristan Jari is not locked up. And I'm, I kind of don't know if you should. I think he's going to be too expensive for a goalie of his quality. Um, he has strangely bad games. So I don't know where you're going to get a goalie out of. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't even know what goalies are available. Somebody somebody tweeted yesterday. They're like, uh, honestly, Dubas should just uh, offer sheet Samson off. I, so whenever a younger forward thinking executive gets hired to any NHL team, mm -hmm. the conversation comes up. So are they going to be the one to offer sheet everybody? Now, no one offer sheets anyone. So I wouldn't bet on it. Dubis doesn't even offer sheet people. That's true. He like everyone's like, oh, maybe he'll everybody. he'll start doing a thing that he's never done. Right. Who has he ever offer sheeted? One name one. Nobody. Nobody. But Samsonov would be a good candidate. Okay. It's, the problem is I don't think Pittsburgh has the picks. Okay. They don't call them Pittsburgh, you see, because right. they haven't called them Pittsburgh for quite some time. Uh they need a save. Um now. You could try to kill two birds with one stone. Okay. And guess where I'm going with this, everybody? It's been a few months. They need to dump contracts, and they need a goalie. Corel Vimelka, baby. Oh. Corel Vimelka with the wherever the fuck they play Coyotes. Try to pry him out of there. You keep talking. You're you're beating the Corel Vimelka drum as though... I think the Coyotes value him, man. I think they like him. No. they They're wrong to value him. Why? Because the Arizona Coyotes don't value winning. Not or, yet. Or competing in any way, shape, or form. Getting an arena. Yeah, no. So get rid of Vimelka. Stop this. Stop this illusion. Okay. That's enough. What are you... Do, who, who are you selling this product to? The masses? No one can fit in your fucking building. Trade the good goalie. Get a bunch of shit and move on. You want some UFA goalies who might be good options for Pittsburgh? Yeah. Do it. Martin Jones, Ilya Samsonov, uh, RFA. Tristan Jari, UFA. Mm. You, they just bring him back. RFA, Swayman. What what amount, what cap hit is Jari coming off of? $3.5 million. If he agrees to come back at that, you do it. But I think he's going to get four or five at least. Duba said in the press conference when asked specifically about Tristan Jari, he said that we're going to take a look at the free agent goalies and Jari including that. And if Jari is the best option to bring back, then that's what we're going to do. So he addressed it specifically in his press conference, but that was the answer. Uh, Frederick Anders Anderson. Get the <laughs> I band don't back think Dubas wants that anymore. Anti Ranta. Maybe. Corpusalo, Cam Talbot, Jonathan Quick, Aiden Hill, James Reimer, Brian Elliott, Varlamov, Halak, Blackwood's an RFA. Alan client. And then we go down the list. Alex Lyon. Oh, there's goals. Laurent Boissois, there's Connor goals. Ingram, greatest goalie of all time. Anthony Stolars, 
uh, Nedeljkovic. There's a there's a decent crop. Oh, that Ned contract's up, right? There's a decent crop of goalies. Yeah. At least uh, at least not like studs, but hey, we can take a flyer on that. Yeah. You know, for yeah. a couple mil. They need a save. Yep. To, to me, I think that sh- that should be priority number one. Like the team has flaws. You need <laughs> the biggest flaws. You need a save. And also, you're too old. I don't know. You need to save. I think I think Kyle put him in himself in a position where he just doesn't need to do that. You just don't need to do that. Don't need to do oh to commit. Yeah, because these guys that we're talking about that he could trade have no value. I think it was done for him. Yeah, that's why he's not trading them because they have no value. No, no, no. The guys, the core three, do. I'm not saying I am not suggesting you trade with Sidney Crosby. Not for a moment. And do you want me to save this as a hot key? So you can bring it up all season long. What's that? With the high? I heard a lot of people that were uh, highly skeptical of, of the team's ability to contend here. And um, the way I view it is that if people want to bet against Mike Sullivan, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang, and others, they can go ahead and do so. But I'm going to bet on them and, and go with them here. His core four. <laughs> you only play that. Kyle Dubas in the core four. Every ride time, again. Just the part, but I'm going to bet on them. Every time the Pens lose, we come back on the show. But I'm going to bet on them. But I'm going to bet on them. And I'm going to bet on them. <laughs> you can bet that with Kyle Dubas. Only this time, he's the president. Were you Sid Sixero? <laughs> I, <laughs> Kyle Dubas, fraud. No, I, I, I don't That's think you. that. I actually am a big fan. I just think he's like, man, you stepped out of Toronto. And what did you get? An older core four. I mean, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm that, sorry. That, that's a it's, dark way to look at it. There's nothing wrong with me saying that. There, I, and I know Penguins fans will be mad because you're in love with these guys. And I totally freaking get it because no, they, they, they won you three cups. Yeah. No, there will be some Penguins fans that are upset. And then, there, and then there'll be Penguins fans that are great. Yeah, there's so many people. There's a lot of people. There's lots of people who think lots of things. There's so many people who think everything. But can I just say this? <laughs> you, can't, you, you can't tell me that, that optically that was a good idea. No matter what they do, the chances are, listen, for every general manager, chances are you're not going to win the cup. So why would you, why are you tying yourself to shit? You know, no, but he's not, he didn't say, he didn't go out and guarantee I'm going to win the Stanley Cup again with City Crosby. He just said, I'm going to keep, I'm going to bet on him. I'm going to keep this core together for two years. It's all he said. Oh. Because that's that's the length of Sidney Crosby's contract. That's all you're, you're tied down to. And I think that's fair. And in two years, the media is going to say, hey, man. Yeah, so you bet on them. And he'll be like, yeah, I did. And they and and, the, and if they don't win, he'll be like, but now I'm going to bet on this. And people will be like, okay, cool. Well, I won't even question it. No, yeah. no, no. If you're betting on and it, he's then. he's going to sit there and tap his 20, well, actually, 24 and 5 cup rings on the yeah. table. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I like The thing is, is with Kyle, like I'm a huge fan. I hope he does well. Like I'm not saying, I just, I don't know. I thought that was mm. beyond the pale. Didn't you learn your lesson on 32? I, I know what you mean. I yeah. am. Here's what I'm excited for. Uh, it's Dubis with a fresh palette. Not really. Someone else's old palette. Yeah, he's tied down. This painting has been painted for a while. It's 20, 20 mil in caps. He's going to have to take a, an old, a bad tattoo and correct it. There are talented artists out there who can do that. We'll see what also, he... I, I didn't, and uh, by the way... What are you talking about? I'll, I'll, no, your tattoos are amazing. I, oh, I, uh, your artist, by the way, can you shout them out again? Livian Sang. Amazing. Uh, I Like, really, genuinely great tattoos. But I, I want to... I do want to say that I do think the rest of the stuff that he promised in the press conference is completely doable. And you see it in Toronto. He, he's going to restock the cupboard. He's going to trade his first pick down for two seconds. And that's actually really great in the end because million, billion. he's very good at, at selecting in the second round and, and beyond. Um, there's so many things that he's going to be able to bring to this organization that it does not have. Because it is just the if you can describe the Pittsburgh Penguins as anything, it's thin. They are thin. They are thin on talent beyond those three players, uh, beyond that head coach. Uh, in their, you know, they they need they need new prospects. They need draft picks, and they need to kind of they need to liven that up a little bit. You know what I mean, Jesse? What? How many right-handed defensemen do they have? I'm not. I just I just want to know. Why are you asking? I just want to know how many right-handed defensemen they have on their roster. Uh, give me one second. I know Petrie is one. Latang is the other. You got Petrie, Latang, Jan Ruda is listed as left slash right. Uh, Ruweedle can play the right. Oh, yeah, and Ruda. Kulikov is left. Chad Ruweedle. Slash right. Chad Ru, not going to work here anymore. He's going to sign Justin Hall. You are a Pittsburgh Penguin. He's going to come in. 
I just want to know how many former Leafs are going to be on the next year's Penguins team. Huh. It, my money is, what's the over under on that? Oh, we should get Dave on that. Opening day roster, how many people who have played at least one game for the Toronto Maple Leafs are on the Pittsburgh Penguins? I'll do you one better. We'll do a Leafs one and a Sault Ste. Marie one. Okay. Okay. So how many Sault Ste. Marie, former Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds play for the Penguins next year? Interesting. Don't you? That'll be fun, wouldn't it? Yes. I mean, there was clearly a connection. I think that'd be fun. I wonder if they get Martin Marinson back. Mm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marty. <laughs> Bring Marty back. Marv. Um, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the Dangles doozy section, by the way, you go to sportsinteraction.com slash SCPN uh, or you download the app. 19 plus, please play responsibly. We have some really great sports interaction Stanley Cup final props. Okay. So um, I want to go through some of, the, some of these with you. So what do you think the chances are of Matthew Kachuk getting, uh, and would you take this bet, Matthew Kachuk getting a point in every game of the finals? Is that a yes or a no for you? Because the, the yes is a seven. The no is a uh, 107. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's a tough one for me. I would say no, just because even the best player in the series, that's such a hard thing to do. Okay. And also, he's going to have to get a point in all four games. Um, I like this prop. Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg at a Vegas home game, and they must appear together. If you take a yes on this, it's a 101 payout. So 100. What's the no? Is, there is no no. It's just if you take this bet. Uh, uh, 100, to one, 100 to 1. Yes. It's 100 to 1. So you bet a dollar, you got 100 bucks. That's right. Yeah. Where <laughs> just put it down. is Martha Stewart? What is she doing right now? From Martha? Ah, she was on Sports Jersey City, New Jersey. Yeah. Not a chi Nutley, New Jersey. New Jersey. You have a Nutley? Okay, how about this? Uh, the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, any game goes to two overtimes, like double mm. overtime. Do you take a yes or a no on that? Yes. Jess? Yes. That's a six. Six to one, yeah. And then they know as a one of nine. Both teams, I'm pretty sure, have been to multi OTs. Uh, I'm not sure about Vegas. We've never seen this happen before, but Kachuk and Bobrovsky share the Conn Smythe trophy. A yes at 50 to one. It's enticing, but I'm going to take no. Okay. All right. And then last one. And we talked about this on our little sports interaction preview. The first player to receive the Stanley Cup after Bettman presents it to the winning captain. So it can't be the winning captain. You have to pick the player from the team that you believe will win. Who do you go with? I got mine. Jesse, go. Marshy. Jonathan Marsh so. And that's a six to one. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. I still say... Uh, Jesse, why do you say Marshy, by the way? Uh, I It was... My logic is I'm going to go with one of the OG Vegas Golden Knights. One of the, I think... Six, five, five, six, five guys who are still there from the first cup run. Mm -hmm. uh, so captain will get it. And then I think they either go to uh, Marshy or William Carlson. So I just pick them between those two are my options. And I just slightly lean toward Marshy. Uh, Sasha Barkov takes the cup and gives it to Eric Stahl, who gives it to his brother, Mark. So I'm going to say Eric Stahl. Hmm. Eric Stahl. Now that one. Eric I'm Stahl gonna... has a cup, right? He does have a cup. Yeah. Does Mark Stahl? No. He's been to the finals. So Mark Stahl pays a 13 to 1. Eric Stahl pays a 26 to 1. Oh, yeah. That's Ooh. $2, Steve, right there. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're all over that? Yeah. Okay. So these are just some of the ones that you can get to uh, before um, before the Stanley Cup finals start tomorrow. So that's 52 bucks. Yeah. On $2? Yeah. Okay. Two dollars. Two dollars. Two dollars. Wow. Uh, uh, so anyway, I wanted you to just check all that out. Now Dave will be back on Monday. We'll have more and more, but just check out the sportsinteraction.com dangles doozy section. Sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. Download the app. Ninety plus. Please be responsibly. Jesse. They should have called this the Nazim Kadri Memorial Bet. <laughs> there is also a bet. Just to close it off, a suspension will be handed down.
<laughs> you can. Oh, th- oh, I like that. Three point five to one that somebody will get suspended. They should have called it the uh, Michael Bunting Nazem Kadri Memorial it's Trophy the Cup Final. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last suspension in the Cup Final that actually got them suspended for Cup Final games? Mm-hmm. Because I think Steve Bernier might have been suspended, but that was the last game of the season. He didn't miss any games. It might have been Aaron Rome in 2011 when he got four, four Whoa. games. For four. what? He drilled the fuck out of Nathan Horton. Wow, it's been a while. Uh, he, was that the one that... No, like, the last really one was uh, oh, yeah. Oscar Sundquist. Oscar Sundquist. Got oh, suspended? with the Blues. Yeah, with oh, the Blues. Wow. He was... Uh, the St. Louis Blues forward was disciplined for boarding Boston Bruins defenseman Matt Grizzlick in game two of the Stanley Cup final on Wednesday and will not play in game three. Sunk was suspended out for Blues game three cup final. Wow. So pre-COVID. Yes. It doesn't happen very often. Wow. Although these teams are, this is going to be a violent cup final. These are two teams that get away with murder. Like I've been watching them and like not just Leaf games. D- dude, Vegas has got away with murder all playoffs. The Panthers have got away with murder. And they're going to let them playoffs. both get away with That's it. That's the playoffs. And they're both going to get away with murder. That is no, the No, worse than usual. Whoever murders harder, I think. Worse That's than usual. Playoff. I'm actually really excited. Every, every team. I'm really excited for this. I think this this could be one of the most fun Stanley Cup finals you ever see. We should go. Oh, yeah. Neither. Yeah, we should go. We should go. Vegas. <laughs> Let's go quick, to Vegas. Quick trip in. Quick trip to Vegas. Yeah. Get the, they like get the boys. Shit, I can actually do stuff like that now. Get the boys together? Yeah. <laughs> we, hit, we, we, we go into Vegas to smash that like button? We should go. What? <laughs> do a little vlog on the way. Let's do it. Uh, oh, man, I would totally do that. That would be fun. Right. OK, well, anyway, I, I think that these two teams are are. This is the first time in a while that you've had like, um, first off, nobody's won the cup before. So there's no perennial mm-hmm. and the, the lightning have been the perennial for a while. Also, there's no like defensive stalwart team. Oh, we defended our way to the finals here. I like the fact, like, they're both good at defense, but really, Bobrovsky is their defense for Florida. And Vegas Vegas can be smothering, but it's not like they were like, you know, in Dallas in 2020, we can't score, but we're going to, we're going to win. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like the ex- like Dallas was an extreme example of both that. Islanders teams that went to the conference yes. against Tampa. Fuck. This is going to be that was really fun. Hockey. And, and I, 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 I said it on the other show and, and uh, people are like, well, it's not going to break ratings re- records. Who gives a shit? If the hockey's good, I guarantee you it will do better. And I think I think there is for the first time I can really say this. I do feel like there is a bit of a buzz ar- a, around hockey. Like in, I do feel like it is growing. I do feel like um, something like this, especially with Miami, because Sunrise, yeah, okay, fine, Sunrise, it's Miami, and and Las Vegas. Yeah, you telling me you can't win some fans over? You can't make this fun? I think you can. I think you're entirely right in that the Stanley Cup Finals feels a little bit more buzzy, and I think it it's because we have two really fun fan bases. Yes, I think these two fan bases are making the Stanley Cup Finals a lot of fun by the amount of interaction they have, amount they care about this. Like it's two great markets for hockey, which are unexpected great markets for hockey, to be honest. But um, it's it feels like it's going to be a really fun Stanley Cup Final. You're I'm missing excited. Something very key. What's that? All the media covering this final are jacked. Yes, that's oh, it. they're having a good time. Can, Florida and like, Vegas. You're you're a hockey reporter. You wait all season for the big celebration. At the end of the year, you're just hoping like, oh, if we could do something fun, you know, we'll see where we go. You get Vegas and Miami. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah. That's gonna oh, be baby. cool. And then after that, you go from you're going back and forth, Vegas, South Beach, you know, blah blah. Then you get to go to Nashville. Oh, man. What a trifecta this, for hockey reporters. This is going to be the best month of like <laughs> some reporters' careers. Yeah. That's such a good point. Yeah, Vegas, Florida, and Nashville. Unreal. Damn. Damn. Unreal. That's good. a good month. You know, hockey reporters, everybody says, you know, they never get anything. They get no breaks in life. Well, I mean, they, no. CJ is always <laughs> the one like, no, we work in the candy. Yeah. Don't listen to that. Nonsense. All they do is have fun all day. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know if they have fun all day. All day. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think this is going to be a fun Stanley Cup final. I can't wait to start talking about hockey games again. Mm-hmm. And I'm really going to enjoy yeah, this serious. because this is the last time for over the next week, week and a half. This will be the last time we get to talk about real live hockey games in the NHL, at least, uh, until October. And I miss them. And I love the summer, but I miss the hockey. It could be a very jam-packed month. So the last day of the cup final 
or the last possible day of the cup final, if it goes seven, is June nineteenth. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to be okay. Clean up the confetti and fucking awards and craft <laughs> and free agency and blah. Yep, I got an outstanding. I got two bets on the uh, trophies. So I'm waiting for like awards day to get. What do you have? What do you have? Out. I got a Maddie Beneers uh, for Calder Trophy. Oh, that's an easy. I took that. Yeah, but you got to take it early. When did you take odds. it? I took it. Uh, I think in January. Oh, good pick. So okay, it's okay. Like, uh, it's about three to one. It's a pretty good pay. Pretty solid. Um, and then I also have Jimmy Monty Burns for the Jack Adams. Wow. So really? Hopefully, yeah. You I don't mean, you, wait, what odds did you get him at? I got Mon- Jim Montgomery at 3.86 to one. So almost four times whatever you put down. That's congrats on your money. And then I got Matty Beneers at 3.3 to one. Mm, I think you won that too. Damn. So yeah, you did. I got Two oh, good paydays. You, you need the win too. Yeah, yeah I can see your, <laughs> how much you got left. Yeah, you need the win. I do need the win. <laughs> yeah, but the uh, so that awards Monday will be fun, and then uh, draft or is the awards Tuesday, and then draft is Wednesday, and then day two is Thursday. It's gonna be a fun little week there, right after Stanley Cup final. I like that. I like that very much. Um, all right, so uh, I don't know if we want to include this in the in the press conference. Um, uh, or if we want to get, oh. <laughs> the Steve Dangle Press Conference. Okay. SDP 10. Oh, go to SDP on shop.ca, get your awesome merch. Uh, S- hashtag. hashtag SDP T E N. <laughs> A lot of people were saying you missed like SDPX because it would have been 10 Roman oh. numbers or XSDP or whatever. No, we chose to go with the worst imaginable hashtag. I know that our uh, social media team, Justin, uh, Jamie and Robert, were all complaining about it uh, as we knew they would. And I think the only person who's really enjoying this is Jesse. Yeah. Like, I'm, well, Steve, you guys are having fun about 10th this is anniversary the worst celebration. Hashtag. Oh, you know what? I did forget to do something about the Florida Panthers Stanley Cup final thing. We can come back to it. Unless you want to. I wanted to talk about the, the placements. The uh, Have you seen the ad placements? Oh, before the we get jersey? This? Yeah. Sorry. It's a bit odd. Yeah. Do you, you mind if we do it? Yeah. Can I throw it to you? Let's go. All right. Here we go. Boom. Okay. I want to see this. First, before we get to the SDP 10, Steve, we can't. Here's the thing about ads. What do you know about ads? They are ads. And they pay for things. They pay for things. Now, the Stanley Cup final. When you get to the Stanley Cup final, what do you get? A patch. Now, what's the patch about? What does it say? Stanley Cup final. You know, what does it advertise? The Stanley Cup final. Right. Now, if you were an advertiser, mm. wouldn't you love to have your patch above a Stanley Cup final patch? Yes. Now, wouldn't you love that? The NHL doesn't love that, though. The NHL thinks, you know what? I don't want that ad too close to that Stanley Cup because they didn't pay for the Stanley Cup finals to be close to the Stanley Cup on this jersey patch when they did it. So we're going to take that patch, that Stanley Cup final patch, and we're going to move. If that player has a letter, we're moving it over. Sorry, get out of the way. We're crowding you together. That looks like ass. It does look like shit. I feel like the 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 way to do this would have that, have the, uh, is it AutoNation that they have that as their patch? Yeah, AutoNation. If, have AutoNation above the Stanley Cup. I. Uh, or below. Visually, it. just looking at it, that is that not the obvious choice? It 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 honestly looks like you've got too many kids crammed in the back seat right now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like when you know when you have too many people crammed in your minivan, that's what it looks like. It like when you when, it's a mess when you ask the cab driver, like, "Could you take one more? We'll yeah. tip." Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they say no. Yes. And so you yeah. walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Haven't done that in many a year. So I, I what did you think about this? Because this was a thing. Uh, it looks dumb. I think it looks dumb. Like, it, it's funny. So I wasn't one of those people who was super against ads on jerseys. Mm-hmm. And then you have the people who are way over the top on the side of, no, the jerseys are going to look how they do in Europe, which is ridiculous because those jerseys have like 12 ads on them. Zero hyperbole. That's how it starts. Like you added one extra patch. You know what I mean? There's the there's the letter. There's the ad. That wouldn't look so bad. But uh, something about cramming the cup patch next to the A. 
It looks like shit, man. Here's my. It does look like shit. Here's yeah. my question. Why does it have to be one or the other? What do you mean? Well, I don't mind jersey patches hmm. because I think these teams want... Listen, if you're a fan of the cap going up, then you shouldn't mind jersey patch, patches. Uh, and I am. And we knew this was coming. It's happening. There, It's here. We can't fight it. Okay? It's not going to look like all the, the European teams that have 40 different patches on them because these are NHL teams. It's expensive real estate. And those, those jersey patched up teams are in leagues that need the sponsorship, need to sell that sponsorship. I get it. Um, the NHL just cannot not be stupid. <laughs> okay. Like, here's what happened, guys. <laughs> Looking at that jersey, what do you really think happened here? Because I'll tell you what I think. I think the NHL didn't think about it. I think that they didn't even consider it. I and then we got to two weeks ago and they were like, you know what we never thought about? And then we ended up with where this. Where are we going to put it? No, and, I, and I think the advertiser thought, uh, no, we want our own spot. Mm-hmm. No. It would put the crowd no, on the other side. I can guarantee you people are blaming the advertiser. It's not the advertiser. The NHL wants you. You can't even say Stanley Cup finals uh, in a promotional sense. We can say it in a news sense because we're on a news thing. But it's like the Super Bowl. You can't say Super Bowl in any sort of promo. Uh, tickets to the big game. I remember when you watch the big game. Oh, the Olympics. Yeah. Like like if we were doing if we were doing a promotion with, say, one of our, our clients, Skip the Dishes. If we're like, hey, if you want to watch the Stanley Cup final uh, and get some wings with Skip the Dishes, use this promo code. We'd actually have to say, if you want to watch the big series, we can't say Stanley Cup finals unless Skip the Dishes is an official partner of the NHL. That's how that works. Cumbersome. So the NHL is like, hey, AutoNation may have bought the Panthers patch, but they didn't buy the Stanley Cup patch. And I don't want a bunch of pictures with AutoNation and then the Stanley Cup silver mug underneath it. And what the NHL should have done, there's a couple routes they could have gone. Sell the jersey patches for the regular season only. And then playoffs, you have a separate contract where you have the ability to opt out if you want to. Or... Uh, you have the ability to stay on, and that means you have to pay the fee potentially no. if the team wins the cup. Easy solution. Take off the cup patch and make the ad three times bigger. That's what the people want. That's what they, <laughs> I'm That's serious. what they want. All they had to do was divide up the regular season and the playoffs in the contracts. Trust me, we do advertising for a living here. All you have to do is have a playoff contract and a regular season contract. You have the jersey patch and... Uh, and, and if AutoNation goes, you know what, Pan- uh, the Boston Bruins and the Panthers, I think the Panthers are going to win. I think we're, we're going to pay for that. And yes, we will agree to be a, a partner of the Stanley Cup final if the Florida Panthers make it. Great. Then your jersey patch can stay on yeah. and you can pay more money. And the NHL blew an opportunity to make more money with the jersey patch, which was the whole point of the jersey patch in the first place. We're never going to know. They did not think about this. We're never going to know. No, we know. That is what happened, Steve. No, I want... That is what happened. I want the leaders Come on, to do guys. a press conference where they tell us it's not what happened, and we just believe them. I, I have no power, said Brendan Shannon. I had no power, says Brendan Shannon. Slash Gary Bettman. The patches are good, guys, and everyone loves them. They screwed this up. They sold them as full season plus playoffs. You don't do that. You sell it as a regular season, and then you upsell the playoffs. That's what you do. And if and then and then you have a you have a condition in the deal. If this team makes the playoffs, then X. Then you pay X amount of dollars. And if you don't want to pay it, we'll strip them off and we'll have we'll go patchless. We'll find somebody who will sponsor know. the Penguins or Penguins Panthers. Come on, this what? is right. This is so like it's such. When you say not a real league, I, I was I was doing my mom's um, doing my mom's show yesterday because my mom actually wrapped up her television show yesterday. It's going to run next. Friday. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah, yeah. Atlantis' television show wrapped up. And one a person came up to me and he said, hey, I'm a new listener to this show. He's a producer behind the scenes at Bell Media. And he said, I, I, I said, I, 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 it was my brother that got me into you. I'm actually a big fan of the Canadians. Uh, but he's like, I really like the show. And he said, Steve's point about not a real league. He's like, he's right, eh? He's like, it's weird. <laughs> and what's crazy about it is he looked at me. He's like, and they just, they like just don't want to do anything about it. No. And, and I look at stuff like this. The NHL knows this jersey looks like shit. They know the patch placement looks like shit. And I bet next year they fix this. But this is what happens when you don't plan. This is what happens when you don't look at 
a game changing thing like adding for the first time ever ads to a jersey and going, how could this affect our playoff? No, you. How gotta, could this affect the rest of the season? You got to go to award shows and get awards for uh, the board ads no one likes. You see that? I did see that. Yeah, they won an award for advertising in that. I just I wanted to take a moment and point that out. This is an easily fixable problem. I'm sure they'll have fixed by next year. But come on, guys, a little foresight sometime. But I, I guess maybe we shouldn't be surprised because the NHL and foresight are like oil and water. They're unbelievable. Adam, I think you're too upset on, on this, the last day at your job. Yeah, this the day of my daughter's wedding. You're just too upset. Okay. And... But because you're so upset, uh, and I thought you might be, we actually um, we put together a compilation oh, of some God. of your best moments. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nope. Maddie worked really bad hard take on and it. Bad take funny. and bad take. And I was just hoping that here, Maddie, can you can you uh, can you get it? Oh <laughs> uh, no, no, no! 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 Do it! No! no, no. Do it! Don't do it do again! It! No, stop. No. You're doing it the wrong way. Turn it the other way. Oh. Steve, we don't have a crew coming in to clean this weekend. Oh, we don't? No. Oh, no. Oh, now you're cleaning this well, up. Well, here, let's celebrate. Uh, oh, my God. I hate no! so <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you? I thought it'd be confetti. funny. I, I found bought four of them. <laughs> Do you know which confetti I found in my freaking backpack? Yesterday, you shouldn't have left it open. I confetti in my shoes. You shouldn't have left it open. Oh my god, that's awful. I'll clean it up. <sighs> Congrats, man. Thanks, buddy. you deserve it. I appreciate it. After now, all those years doing radio, you deserve it. Thank you, thank Thanks, you. Man. I do appreciate it. Sixteen years in radio. Um, <laughs> Turn it the wrong way. Uh, that's hilarious. Okay, let's get into SDP ten. Jesse, what do you got Jesse's for us? So upset. He's oh, he's mad. <laughs> um, the jersey patches affect three players on the ice. I'm still upset about it. They're the most important people on the ice. That's uh, the other players don't have letters, so it doesn't look as bad. Okay, so Jesse, what do we got? <laughs> I got, I got some on, uh, I got some on. Uh, um, let me let me read a couple from uh, the Discord. Okay, I got some here too on take, uh, Twitter. All right, so Adam and Jesse are so upset. <laughs> I'm very um, upset. Oh, where's the one I was looking for? Hold on, give me a second. So yeah, on our Discord, sdpn.ca to join us on Discord. Uh, in the SDP podcast talk channel, there's a lot of great memories. I'm gonna we're gonna go through a couple. This is from Jonas. I first listened to the show with Myrtles and Metapods on September 4th, 2014. Wow. And slowed down listening over last year. I'd have to say my favorite moment is very biased, but in February of 2015, I met Steve on the train to Toronto when he was going to record a podcast and I podcast and I to see Ripley's Aquarium. So he was going to Ripley's, you were going to record, okay. record a podcast. I mentioned I was a viewer of his and a new listener of the show. I got a shout out that day, but instead of a uh, glad to have you, Adam, mm -hmm. sarcastically, lambasted me for being a new viewer and not an old one. Did I? He said, why haven't you been listening before, you dick? You <laughs> asshole. It was a very fond memory and one of the reasons I fell in love with the show so much and leaned on it. Seeing the guys come so far is amazing. I'm so glad to have been a part of the ride. When did I say that? I this, is, this is 2015 hey, in February. Are you, you lambasted by... Jonas <laughs> for being a new listener. Yeah, you should have been listening earlier. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, K-Town sides with you about the hashtag. Said, why did you uh, leave the hashtag to somebody who came up with the title Jesse Blake Sports Report? Yeah, no kidding. Damn. That's Branding. Not great. Damn. Uh this one is from which one should I read next? All of them. Uh, Individually, one by one. Cap with Joe. Adam's got nowhere to be. Sitting there watching the podcast and very suddenly being like, Jesus Christ, have I been listening to the show for a whole de decade? Yes, you have. I took the train to college so the podcast was the perfect listen uh, to and from school. I didn't even like the Leafs at a time. I thought their logo was stupid. Damn. Oh, but no, their logo was stupid. This is from Don't Do It. Not so much a specific memory, but this show is the reason I work in sports media. 
Wow. I wow. found the pod in 2017 with the trade Alexander Ovechkin video. Uh, you guys, <laughs> me, do you remember we titled the podcast Trade Alexander Ovechkin? Just to be dicks? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys immediately stood out to me with your humor and your approach to, 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 approach to topics in the hockey world. Like many others, I became a regular listener and slowly got turned into a Leafs fan. I think we turned a lot of people into Leafs fan over the last 10, Fuck, ten years. So a sorry. lot of people say that. That's wrong. Fast forward There's a few years later and I begin to read Steve's book. I was inspired by his stories coming up in the media industry and decided to go back to college for sports media. While at college, I was hired to do play-by-play -play for the hockey teams and began to do some media work for the teams as well. Later on, a friend sees me in a Leafs jersey and asks if I'm a fan. Then they say, do you know who Steve Dangle is? My best friend in high school used to love his videos. You should meet her. We've now been together for two years, still making references to LFRs we loved when we were teenagers. Oh, I love that. Wow. Eventually, I graduated with a degree in video production and now do media work for the ECHL team in my hometown. I also spend my free time calling games for local junior hockey team. Oh, I love that. Thank you I'm guys for the show and this community, your approach to life, doing the right thing, blah, blah, blah. Congratulations, congratulating us on 10 years, helping me countless others get their first start. So not only did they meet their partner, they got a job in media because of this stupid podcast. And wow. you want to read some from Twitter? I got, I got some good ones. I got some good ones. Um, Jesse, the first one I want you to bring up if you can. I've sent you two text messages. Uh, both are videos. Uh, oh, sorry. One's video. One's a um, uh, one's a a, a, a a picture. So the first one is from 2018, and I'm actually surprised it's only from 2018 because I thought this would be uh, a little bit older. Um, and it was when the Leafs last made a GM change. Um, Kyle Dubas came on, and people were talking about the differences between um, Kyle Dubas and Lou Lamorello, and how people were making a ton of a ton of noise about oh, Lou Lamorello uh, did this and didn't do that, and and all you the good decisions were Kyle's. Yes, all good decisions were Kyle's. All bad ones were Lou's. Um, Jesse, can we play that YouTube video because it's a minute and a half and it cuts right to it? Oh, you want to play? For, for <laughs> yes. Right. Can we do that? We don't fully know how Mark Hunter, being the head of of that of of the drafting, yeah. we don't fully know how that ended up. Right? We still don't know. We're no. still maybe three, four years away. It's nice to see Carl Grundstrom maybe, you know, Jesse jump on up. and he's going to play well. And, and what if Dubas was like, we need Fedor Gurdiv. <laughs> that was his pick. Maybe. If we get Fedor Gurdiv in the fifth round or I quit <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> he threatens to friggin' fight Brendan Shanahan and kick Lou Lamorello in the chest <laughs> unless the Leafs trap <laughs> Fedor Gurdiv. <laughs> It might have been him. You'll never know. <laughs> Kicks him right in the chest. Wow! <laughs> Front kick. Gets his glutes into it. Hips. Activation. Fetter Gurdiv forever. More like forever Gurdiv. We need him. And Mark Hunter's like, Jesus, dude, chill. No! And he slapped him. <laughs> slapped Mark Hunter. But like he didn't like Mark Hunter kind of move, so he slaps him in the neck. Wow. Slaps him right in the neck. So it's, it's like a karate chop. Almost knocks him out like James Bond. It's messed up, man. Kyle Dubas is crazy. It's <laughs> <laughs> a loose cannon. Can I just say I got up to change the camera? <laughs> Jesse got up to change the camera, and yeah. that's what Steve did the whole fucking time. <laughs> that's what happens sometimes is that... I had to keep a bit going because Jesse was standing. Or or you just... Sometimes you just go, man. You just fucking go. And like I'm like, all right, I'm going to get out of his way. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, I did a talk at Ryerson a few years ago, mm -hmm. and someone came up to me after I was done, and they're like, hey, so I'm actually... Uh, I think I'm a friend of a friend of Fedor Gurdiv. No. And, and he knows about that. Does he? Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And does he like it? I think so. That's sick. Yeah. I love that. He still plays too, I think. That's cool. I'm so where, glad he likes yeah. that. Um, The next one, Jesse, can you bring it up? Yes. Is it this uh, one? It says... Jesse, oh, that was not the one, but hey, listen, that works too. Uh, that that was not the one I wanted. Oh, I sent the you, wrong piece. Okay. But yeah, you do. Way to go. Yeah, sorry about that, Jesse. Stupid. Um, now, I've got one for you, Steve, okay? Uh, a lot of people asked, and these episodes have been archived, so I don't think people remember, but some of the day ones, some of the people that have been here forever, uh, Jesse will remember this, uh, will remember that you had a great Bob Cole impression. Mm -hmm. I sure did. And we, I thought it'd be fun one day for Steve to do oh. Bob Cole, uh, but reading Fifty Shades of Grey. 
Fifty Shades of Bob Cole. Fifty Shades yeah. of Cole. And people are saying they're, they're still talking about it. So I would like you. I've got 15 of the hottest, according to Post Toast, um, 15 hot lines from Fifty Shades of Grey you can use to spice up your relationship. Can we do like five? Yeah, just do whatever. <laughs> yeah, like we don't have to do 15. Uh, do I want to I wanna read some more. I want to read some more. All right. Numbers. All right. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> just, just scroll through and just read every one of those little things. I'd like to bite that lip. You will not be able to see me or hear me, but you'll be able to feel me. (laughs) (laughs) I want want to do rude things to you, and my alter ego knows a trick or two. (laughs) Anticipation is the key to seduction, and right now, I'm really... (laughs) Into delay. <laughs> right now, I'm really into delayed gratification. <laughs> you want me, baby? And I sure as hell want you. You know what to do. I want you to please me. <laughs> I want you. I want you to be reminded that I've been here. Only me, you're mine. <laughs> you beguile me, completely overwhelm me. I've never wanted more until I met you. <coughs> this <laughs> this is your punishment. So close and yet so far is this nice. <laughs> Do you have any idea how exquisite your scent is? It's irresistible. (laughs) Hockey night returns after this. You want me to keep going? Oh, that's good. It's great. It's great. Jesse, let's read some more. We got Endless who says there was that one time they were talking about the chain smokers. And I listened to it with a friend in the car and we couldn't stop. Oh, Jesse and I talking about the chain smokers? Did we not bring that to this show? What like because we we were talking about the the kiss the kiss yeah, thing and right? We told that story on this show, did we? Yeah. Oh man, I, it's about still, us messing up on on kiss. That's my greatest regret in our career. And Jesse and I almost died. And do you know this? Do you remember this story? No. Jesse, how do you remember it? Um, because I remember we were giving away. So the, yeah. the big You're prize Jesse. on the b- big prize on Kiss ninety two five at the time was uh, seeing the chain smokers in Paris. They had this the song we were staying in Paris. You know that song. Paris. Away from your parents. Yeah, yeah. Paris and parents. They ran. So we call the winner. Jesse gets him on the phone. He's like, oh, they just woke up. I was like, what? It's the afternoon. What? Because I was doing afternoons with him at the time. And so anyway, we pick up the phone and um, <laughs> person, I think that Jesse, if I'm wrong here, correct me. Mm-hmm. But I, I said, hi, like, blah, blah, blah. Congratulations. You've won tickets to see the chain smokers in Paris. And then she said, oh, I'm in Paris, right? Yeah. And and we're like, what? <laughs> She's like, I'm in Paris right now. We're like, Paris, Ontario? She's like, no, Paris, France. Uh, and, and we're like, oh, well, cool. You get to go back. And then we didn't make the connection that we should have maybe played. We, like, there was a whole bunch of, well, there was a whole bunch of shit about like, so they, yeah. were, they were in Paris and we should have been like, Oh, so you could stay in Paris. It wasn't, it wasn't, no, it wasn't tickets to see the Chainsmokers in Paris. It was tickets to see the Chainsmokers in Toronto. Oh, in Toronto. And she was in Paris at the time. That's what it was. to us at like four in the morning. Yeah. And she had won it and we had made no connection between the Chainsmokers having the song and her being in Paris. Yeah. And, we're like, and we we're, just went into the break. I'm like, oh, congratulations. Like, oh, that's great. You're, that's cool. You're listening to us overseas and we never addressed the fact Idiots. that. You did this live? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Idiots. That sounds like It was nightmare. awful. Oh, it was, it was terrible. Sorry, this I did one's... a terrible job. <laughs> I don't remember some of this stuff right like i forget it sorry i did a terrible job this one's that. from htp congratulations on 10 years Rel- relatively speaking i'm very much a new listener i think under two years i want to share my favorite clip from the podcast so far my brother owns a business and we worked together for you uh together for a few years on it i did the, i did the it and tech support stuff for him we heard this together and to this day we still use it when dealing with other business owners who make really really questionable decisions and of course being a couple of many decades flyers fans who fucking hate Hated the guy. It's an easy favorite. And that is the Steve's end of an era in Philly video. Do you remember that one? End of an era in Philly video. No. 
I'll play some of it here. Let me end of an era. And Philly. I thought you were going to tell the what are you nuts? Which oh, one's that? I do love that one. That story. The, here's, the, here, here. here's the clip. Job is a team with no money. I hope his next NHL job is a team with no money. That's Chuck Fletcher. Because he just stuffs a potato cannon with wads of hundreds. And every offseason goes, oh, no, I've identified a problem. <laughs> and he fires the potato cannon at it. And the problem stays there. It's just now covered in money. I hope his <laughs> About that, I don't remember saying that. That's, Good line. What wow. are you talking about, Chuck Fletcher? <laughs> Good line, me. That's a fucking great line. Oh my god. Uh, there was okay. So there's a few throwbacks that I can't even remember. Mike Francesa spills coke live on the air. Yeah. So we, we took that, that clip. <laughs> I guess yeah. if I can find that Mike. I Fran- forgot about that Fran- one. Francesca. Yeah. We used to, have, we used to do Mike Francesca bits all the time. I loved. Here, here it is. Here it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. We, um, we had. We um, freaking out about Harambe. Also, um, the the ancient Brits can't draw. That was recent. Um, can you <laughs> like last week? <laughs> so, Jesse, can you bring up the? I'll bring up the Mike Francesa thing in a second. But I sent you a text. Uh, can you bring up some ancient British art for Steve? <laughs> oh, you just want me to? Go My ancestors no, I have that. sucked at drawing. <laughs> They're terrible. Garbage. Um, I well, also- it's. I have some of the best and worst art in history in my lineage. The Italians, Michelangelo, the Brits, some Ancient fucking dude with a Brit crayon. art. They are they are so good at two D. Like, look at that. Look at that bullshit. <laughs> so they cannot draw. They can't. The ancient Brits could not draw. And it's funny. You look at it like Italian art or Roman art or Greek art or Sassanid Persian art or any of that stuff. Phenomenal, but for some reason, like a thousand years later, they're like, now we forgot. Something about tomatoes and olives develops the parts of your brain that allows you to draw. And uh, potatoes, they don't do it. No. They don't. No. And other things the Brits eat. It just doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't w- Warm ale doesn't help you draw. <laughs> um, the uh, Jesse, I've, I've sent you the video for Mike uh, Francesa with the Diet Coke. <laughs> so Mike Francesca, for Francesca, for those who don't know or are just catching up with the show or whatever, Mike Francesa was a long time, very successful afternoon sports guy in New York. And he actually worked with uh, it was it was the Mike and Mad Dog show or something, or Mad Dog and Mike or whatever. One of the most legendary sports shows in New York because they almost hated each other every day and they just yelled at each other. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. And Mad Dog now goes on. Um, he now goes on like first take with Stephen A. Smith every Tuesday. He's a very entertaining guy. Mike was also very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's this clip and he he would <laughs> he live streamed it to it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Diet Coke. Is <laughs> oh, no. So he knocks his it's, Coke over. Yeah. Stands it back up. But because it's a Coke, all the fizz comes out the top. It keeps exploding. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. It's I so just, good. Remember her, um, Mike Francesa talking about Harambe? No. What did he say? Well, he was mad that like people were upset. The gorilla died and people weren't concerned about the child. And everyone's upset about the gorilla. <laughs> the child was called. fine. The child was Just, fine. Yeah. But everyone was concerned about the gorilla. Because that was his. He's got a very strong, I think, Brooklyn accent. Oh, who knows, man? Yeah. He's he was a, he was a, he's gone now, I think. He's uh, gone. And I, I don't believe he's on radio. I don't know if he even has a podcast. Fell From what we've heard, I think it was, was it Julie Stewart Binks that told you he was a really nice guy? Oh, yeah. So he's apparently a very, very nice man, yeah. but he had some hilarious takes. Oh, and man. Man, it's just like it was kind of like watching your, your grandpa on the air, you know, like sometimes. Do you guys grumpy. remember when we did Farmers Only ads? Yes. That's oh. from uh, yes. Backy's Back. All right. Yeah. Have we done a hockey one yet? What do you mean? Like <laughs> all our best memories are not hockey. <laughs> this is Colin said, uh, I love the Steve's kayak. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I can tell Adam had been holding on to that nugget of information, ready to drop it on Steve and tell uh-huh. the world about how he bought a kayak for his friend. There was another uh, nugget that Adam held on to for a long time. Is mm-hmm. that in your prep? What's that? The goddamn Adam baited me so hard. He knew before the show that my wife. Oh, this is great. Had, oh, that was a good one. Had bought. Blue Jays playoff tickets. Yeah. And you thought it was a waste of money. So No, but I didn't know. 
So the plan was she was going to call in to the show to tell me, hey, I got Blue Jays tickets. First time in the playoffs in, you know, since 1993. Ah. And Adam, earlier in the show, wound me up about how much the tickets cost. And I was like, that's stupid. You shouldn't spend that much money. There's so many other ways you could spend that money. And then she calls in and goes, I got Blue Jays tickets. <laughs> and I just had to go, that's so good. I'm so glad you did that. Thank you. That's so great. I don't even think, I didn't even tell her what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you that's diabolical how in, asshole. Oh, it was great. This is from Ash J. Do you guys remember when? When I introduced you to the the air horn 20, 20th century Fox intro, and then that yes. was in the SDP intro yes, for yeah, like yeah. a couple months. I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot about that one. Awesome. Uh, that was very funny. Uh, there's a couple of mentions of Belly Hadid. Oh, uh, that was a good one. Jordans, 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 <laughs> Bachelor bios. Get it. Uh, David Dobrik and Liza Kashi. Uh, breaking that down. That was a yeah. good one. Yeah. Levi Maestro, obviously. With the watch that doesn't tell time. <laughs> watch the yeah. Jake and Smallwood, They're who Steve is best friends with now. Uh, I will text with Jake and Smallwood every now and then. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. We feel bad for that segment. Man. Man well, no, because so, okay. <laughs> we went through the WHL names and we came across Jake and Smallwood, which is a letter away from Jack and Smallwood. <laughs> and we were like, oh, my God, why would someone name their kid that? And then someone sent me a video of this child eating a salad or a cereal or something, listening to the segment and looking sad. And then I realized that person was Jake and Smallwood's sister. And the person in the video was Jake and Smallwood. Oh, my God. <laughs> so the fact that he doesn't hate us. I mean, uh, like we deserve to be hated. Oh, yeah. That. Then we had him on. And remember, it was like. Uh, we were talking about how we want Jake and Smallwood jerseys. Yeah. And we go, so what's your number? And he starts going like 708. And we're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to give the phone number. <laughs> and we're like, Jake, Jake, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's true. I forgot about that. He was a good guy. Really, yes. really nice guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah was, uh, where's he going? Do you have well, more from uh, Twitter, Adam? I can uh, I can pull more. I think, you know, the other thing about Jake and Smallwood that I, I can kind of remember is that people used to um, tweet us that they had drafted him in um, yes in yeah. NHL. Like he was in several of those NHL games as like a, you know, a prospect. Mm -hmm. So he was a guy that you could sign or draft or whatever. Um, so I, I love that one. I absolutely love that. He played this past season at the University of Alberta. Do you guys remember when uh, you let me rant for like half an hour about the Fast and Furious movie? Because I, I don't. I saw but it and then was it bad? Let me do a re movie review on it. Oh yeah, because Ludacris went to space. Yeah, it was the you one where they went upset. to space. Oh <laughs> I saw it at a drive-in. I talked about it for like half an hour. You were very upset uh, about Ludacris going to space. <laughs> Somebody threw that one out. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking up here. Um, okay, so Jesse. Um, uh, somebody, this is Baltimore Berserk has been with us forever. Yes. And, and sent us hot sauce years ago and stuff like that. Uh, the first time that Jesse spoke on the podcast, a lot of people don't know this, oh. but Jesse said nothing for the first six months, right? You were quiet. Yeah. Maybe it's because of the first question you asked me. Oh, so we, okay. On is, Jesse's is that first where show going with this? Yeah. <laughs> so Jesse's first show. Let's talk about that. Huh? We, we had just brought him on and we wanted people to get to know him. So we had a press conference <laughs> where, where we're like, ask Jesse anything you want. Get to know Jesse, our new producer. And, and the first person, <laughs> the first fucking question is, who is your hottest first degree relative? <laughs> Like, you fucking assholes. Like, are you kidding me? Welcome to the show, Jesse. What the fuck? All right, what cousin you want to fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So Jesse didn't speak. You never did answer the question. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, uh, Baltimore Berserk also said the second <laughs> half of your show where you were allowed to curse because you were no longer on the radio. So uh, yeah. for a while, Dave Cadeau, shout out to Dave, who's a great guy um, and, and who was the head of uh, Sportsnet 590, the fan for a long time. Um, he was the first guy to put us on the air and he put this show on the air at like 1 a.m. And we would do the first 45 minutes and then the rest of the 15 minutes would be commercials. 
So the first 40 45 minutes of the show were a swear-free zone. And then the rest of it, we could say whatever we wanted uh, for a little while there. And what was funny about that was like it, Sportsnet never really never asked us. First off, they never paid for anything. So mm -hmm. we just gave it to them. We got no money for that. But we were also like um, we were probably five years into the show at this point. And, uh, uh, and we're like, uh, we, we, we were doing this and then we asked them like, Hey, you're posting the entire episode. We thought you were only posting, you know, 45 minutes of it. You're posting the entire episode on your website and there is swearing on it. And the guy, uh, the guy who was the head of the podcast at the time of sports, it's like, Oh, you know what? Um, probably, probably best practice not to swear on, on, on podcasts ever. Like, you know, we have found through research that people don't like swearing on podcasts. And, we and I'm like, like, that's great. It's our show. We'll do what we yeah, want. Yeah. Well, and, and he never, and the thing was we continued doing it. No one ever checked. Oh, so, no. um, and then also the Steve <laughs> Dangle, some of Europe rant from the world mm. cup seven years ago. Now, 2016, we talked about how <laughs> The World Cup was a joke because two of the teams weren't even countries. There's there's Europe or no, sorry. There were like there was like team Sweden, Finland, Germany or no, there wasn't a Germany. There wasn't a Germany. Germany was part of some of Europe. Mm -hmm. Right. The team was called Europe, but it was team some of Europe. It was like Germany in the Balkans. Like it was crazy. There were know. German country or sorry, there were Europe European countries represented and also Canada, the States and team North America. What? We all the, the, the whole hockey b world rebelled and called them the Young Guns. Remember that? Who? And that's what it should have been. America? That's what it should. Remember the it Young was, Guns. Uh, they, it was a terrible format. It was, remember? and it was a fun tournament. The yeah. Young Guns thing was great. Do you yes. remember um, Fuck Shane? I do remember Fuck Shane. Why did we say fuck Shane? Because uh, there was a question we, we, we were never supposed to get to, to him, and and Jesse said, "Hey, we didn't get to Shane's question." I was like, "Whatever, fuck Shane, we're going." Fuck Shane. <laughs> and then it became our running. Shut thing. up, Shane. And then every episode, Jesse would be like, "Should I? Uh, should I ask Shane's question?" But fuck, like, nah, fuck Shane. Him. Somebody else said, uh, "Guys, uh, top memories: the Hollywood Bros, the guys that went." To uh, oh, to yeah. protest the fact that they couldn't party in Hollywood anymore, and they're like, "What up, council? What up, council? We just want to have a kegger. Like, why do we keep getting shut down?" Yeah. Uh, it was great. The Bella Hadid thing, Diamondback, the Jim Jim Diamond. Oh, he's gonna get you. Yeah. So get you. So Vegas's Twitter account, when it was in its first year, was bombastic. Yes. And it went after a reporter from Nashville in the Western Conference Final because right. Uh, I think it was Western Conference Final. That's, meh, I don't know. Anyway, they said, oh, they, they, you know, these reporters are only fans of the team. And a lot of reporters were like, me? I'm not a fan of the team I cover. I, I could, I could, it couldn't be me. We are objective. And, uh, and it was, and also it happened to be this guy, Jim Diamond, who's just a really nice guy. No, because he was the, 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 the union head for the Nashville chapter. Mm -hmm. Oh, of the, yeah. B, the professional hockey writers? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, and, uh. And anyway, for some, how did it get into the Diamondback thing? I don't even know how you got there. I was I, he's I, a snake. Yeah, we talked about his backhander, and like how he bragged about his backhander for some reason. Yeah, like they call it the Diamondback because <laughs> it'll get you. And it just it just evolved a typical conversation we can't even recant. And then he actually recorded an audio piece for you. Yeah, and he's like, "This podcast is brought to you by, or this yeah, this Steve Dangle podcast is brought to you by me, Jim Diamond, the Diamondback. It'll get you." It'll right? get you. <laughs> In like uh, intro. Do, uh, the dogs playoff picks. I have no idea what they're talking about. Dogs playoff what? picks. Oh, I made a video where my dogs oh, um, yes. picked who would win in the playoffs. <laughs> and people got outrageously upset. <laughs> really? Because it was obvious that the dogs were simply picking the treat on the right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember this? No, I don't remember any oh of this. Oh my god. When you brought it up on the podcast, we gave you so much shit for it. And I was like, they're dogs! <laughs> Just enjoy that they're dogs! <laughs> I, now I gotta go find that one. That um, was, I completely forgot about that. Uh, what color is a tennis ball? Jesse being a shithead. That was that was the height of what color is this dress or oh, is a hot yeah. dog a sandwich? Simpler times. Simpler times. Yeah. Cliff Fletcher bit from the trade parade. Do we remember what that was? Cliff Fletcher? No. No. No, I don't remember that at all. Uh, the other one, that's that. When you used to say that's that, that's that. that, that's what that is. I think, was that not a Greg Brady article for the Leafs Nation or something like that? It was. Oh, man. It was based and we on know somebody Greg. ending like a tweet or an well, article with that's 
that. That's that. 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 That's what that is. <laughs> What's that? And that. then uh, number eight, a more recent one, Adam forgets his password. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't I like the one it. where the day after the studio was cleaned. Steve and you Maddie fired dick. confetti cans. I'm going to have to come here early on Monday with my actual shot back and clean this up. You're such an asshole. Oh, my God. Uh, Adam shaving his butt. Oh, the shaving the butt story. That was funny. Oh, yeah. Maddie doesn't know that. Should I tell that story again? We got a lot of new people. Go for it. So um, when you're a boy, uh, you get a lot of when you're a hairy boy, I should say. Uh, I'm a hairy boy. Uh, you get a lot of hair everywhere. And one of the places I got hair uh, that was new and unexciting uh, was um, my my bottom uh, in my late teens. I had a bare bottom until then, and then I became a hairy bottom boy. Yeah, early puberty, you're like, I wish I was hairier. And then you're like, no, go back. Yeah, no, stop. No, no, now stop button. Is there a stop on this? I assure uh, you there is not. So I would. It, what, what's brutal about it is that when it comes in, it gets very itchy. Like, you know, you know, you know when you like shave or you wax or whatever, you, it can get itchy when the hair grows in. The first time it gets in, it's really itchy. You ever work at the zoo with extremely hairy legs and part of your uniform is full pants? Oh. In the middle of July and August? Terrible. Mm. I'd have so many back of knee sweat marks. Uh, uh, but anyway. Just I, like every after zoo party was just a bunch of raisins walking around. <laughs> oh, God. Just a, just a bunch of barely like people on the brink of dehydration death. <laughs> Why? Yeah, they always, they do make you wear pants, and I don't know why. Just have a beer and a half and be cataclysmic. So my my butt was bothering me. I couldn't sit in class, and I was in last year of high school and first year of university throughout this butt problem. <laughs> and finally, in my first year of university, I decide, you know what? This five bladed razor that I use on my face, I. I'm gonna use this on my butt because I'm so tired of sitting through three hour lectures and flipping my butt <laughs> back and forth like I'm on top of somebody grinding like my life depends on it. And that's how I used to, because I would go to the bathroom and I would like try to scratch it and then it, it would be fine and then I'd go sit back down and it would be like, no, nope, we're fucking itchy again. Nope, and then, you know what makes things not itchy anymore? Shaving. So I shaved <laughs> and my, my, and I only, sh I got halfway through, that's right, one cheek and my ass turned in the, into the, the, the surface of the moon. It was cratered it was cut. It was, and you could, because I'm like, I'm in the thing. I'm trying to like, you know, shave from behind here. Adam. And I wasn't good. And then I actually, it you was, were a legal adult when you made that decision. Oh yeah. I was probably close to 19 and I, you, you were a voter. I, yeah, hundred percent. You voted on the future of this country. Absolutely. I, I could buy liquor. I'm fairly sure. Oh, and, God. uh, and I, and I lived with my mom at the time because I was going to post-secondary and I, I was like, mom, I, I got a problem. She's like, what's the problem? And I had to explain this problem to her. And I said, I don't know what to do about it. And uh, and uh, and then she's like, well, you're going to have to let me see. <laughs> so I had to show my mom my half shaven ass. You showed ass. Marilyn Dennis your ass? And then, I, what the and then, fuck? And then she crazy. was like, and she's like, I'm going to introduce you to something. It's called moisturizer. And that was, it was brutal. It was so bad. It was so bad. But yeah, that's what happened. I, I um, blindly shaved one half of my ass with a five bladed razor very underrated part of that story is it's the same razor you used to shave your face yes yeah yeah i remember that yeah good story it was bad anyway so listen keep them coming lots of memories uh thank you so much for for sticking around for 10 years we do appreciate it I, like i said half the shit we do i don't even remember anymore but um it's uh maybe you'll start remembering stuff <laughs> absolutely nothing is worse than like uh, at a book signing or something, someone will come up to me and they'll say something I do not understand. Happens at all. all the time to me. And they're yeah. quoting me to me. And I'm like, I don't remember that. Adam, I think I from, <laughs> from today onwards, you're going to remember everything. You think so? Yes. <laughs> because of now, you, now you don't sleep. wake up. Yeah. Yeah. You don't wake up at four in the morning. It's a new era. It really is. It's I think eight era. of the last 10 years doing this show has been, I've been doing mornings as well. So this is going to be fun. Ooh. Ooh. It's a, it's a whole new world. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much. Uh, let's talk about some Stanley Cup finals when we come back on Monday. And don't forget to check out the CJ show because they have a treasure trove of stuff on the on, on the Leafs and True Living and Dubis and all the other stuff going on there. And guys, have a fantastic weekend. Uh, no. Pride. Don't forget. Oh, yeah. One more time, Jesse. Give it to us. Oh, hit the link in the description. Help us raise money for our virtual 5K. Go to sdpnshop.ca, pick up some Pride merch. 
and let me know what throwback vault merch you want me to drop on the store for Monday. I love it. Maybe a little deep dish three set? Oh, no way! The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.